Good evening. We're recording just a little bit early. You're not going to be able to see Eric's... Oh, shoot. Stand up, Eric. Stand up? Stand up. There's Eric's red pants. Yes. Right. Thank you. And that's title two. And hey, there's... Doesn't make for great radio. Brandon McLean. Alright, so that'll be able to cover. That'll be able to cover everyone else. We got my corner. And let's rock and roll. You want to text a. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even ask. What's your name? It's Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, it's Brandon McClenahan. Brandon McLean, I apologize. Oh, no problem. I was just like, I should ask. Don't go so fast, man. What's your Chris. Brandon. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, hey. Love right, love and love who do you play in Love Song? I play Bean. Bean? Yes. B-E-A-N-E. Stay tuned, we got uh, more uh, programming coming up, fantastic uh, sports programming, NFL Week 13 in the books, also uh, we got the Ouch. BCS games locked in, hot <coughs> stove, oh it's all here, lukewarm microwaves too, I'm Rick Tittle, have a great night. Vegas is best right. So we'll play one spot. Let's play a yeah, 60 second one. AM 1400 ASHB, North Las Vegas. How fresh is sweet tomatoes produce? Let's just say within 24 hours of being on the ground, it's not a refrigerated truck on its way to the restaurant. Sweet tomatoes food is fresh from the farm to your fork, made from scratch every single day. Sweet tomato salad bar includes fresh tossed signature salads. Fresh cut produce, plus eight made from scratch soups. Hot pasta, muffins made from scratch. You can also create your own low fat yogurt uh, dessert. Something uh, healthy yeah, and nutritious yeah, for the entire so, family. Yeah. Treat yourself to a family with fresh, great tasting, yeah. wholesome recipes, fresh seasonal vegetables, and no cost salads prepared every 20 minutes. There's four sweet tomato right. locations so thanks, thanks thanks for for offering in the area. I'm going to play one more until they get their asses in here. <laughs> Is it Joe? Oh, so he's almost here. Check out Tom Square's new hot spot at the Ranch House Kitchen. They open every day at 8 a.m. and breakfast is served all day long to the closing. Only one is Highlight Ranch. Okay, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And Eric can have this one when he comes in. You can put on the headset if you want. Awesome. I'm going to try the chicken cheddar bacon onion. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like the burger one. Okay. I'm going to try the chicken one. <coughs> that's awesome. Sponsored by chicken. Well, I know I'm ready, and I know that Glenn is ready. I got he's bacon. Eating McDonald's over there. I got bacon. <laughs> Let's do this thing. I'm in love. It's curtain call with Eric Ball and bacon and bacon. <laughs> Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Curtain Call. I'm Eric Ball, and, and this is the special 10 to midnight version. Yeah, this is, uh, this is after hours. Curtain it, it, Call it, well, after hours. Well, it is hours. definitely after hours, uh, as uh, uh, Eric has his special Yoohoo, and uh, our guest, uh, one of our guests this evening, and myself, are enjoying a little Gentleman Jack. Yeah, actually, my, my drink of choice tonight is Red Bull, in the hopes that I don't doze off halfway through the show. <laughs> and uh, not only that, but we are sponsored by uh, tonight. Oh, I just spit a little food. Uh, the cheddar bacon onion grilled chicken sandwich, um, which um, oh. it, it is 
uh, actually not bad. Uh, I don't do chicken from fast food. I try not to, but I've been uh -huh. eating the burgers, and I wanted to try yeah. with the chicken. Uh, but also sponsored by Camera 3. Say hello, Brandon. Hey, how's everybody doing? That's Brandon McClanahan. He's, he's joining us today. He's... Um, plays the part of Bean in the upcoming uh, Cockroach Theater production of Love Story. Yeah. And so it's very exciting. We're supposed to be joined by Eric Amblad, but he, you know, we're going to give him grief. Uh, we should charge a late fee. We, well, you know, in all, in all, uh, uh, in his defense, I mean, building a set today, oh, doing rehearsal, building set. Okay. It, it, he had to do, I'm sure he'll be thrilled to talk about the uh, TEDx seminar that the uh, Cockroach Theater hosted yesterday, okay, uh, I, in, in, in which uh, I will let him discuss Oh, the, no, I, I need to hear about Yes. Is there, who, do, you get, do you know how to turn the volume? I can't hear myself in my headphones, so I hear nothing when I talk. And really? That's, that's a problem that's to terrifying. me, because I need to hear my voice. <laughs> do you, do you, you know, no, you really, from this side, you don't. Okay, that's that's you guys, though. That's I, I can... I, Hello? Whoa. There we go. Wow. There we go. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. Is it too much? <laughs> a little down. Okay, right, right there? That's good. Okay, okay. All right, well, listen, um, Curtain Call is every Sunday, usually from 6 to 8, but we're doing a kind of like, um, you know, this is kind of like the ghost light Curtain Call, if you will. Well, when you, when you, when you consider, you know, that we're on a, a station that does a, a lot of uh, sports, Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that we're able to do a theater show when sports is primarily... Yeah, yeah it's like we're, we're the drama kid in the high school. We're, we're lucky to walk down the sports hallway. Yeah. And the nice, the nice thing is, is we're able to come in, you know, even if it's just uh, for a couple of hours sure. uh, once a week. Normally six to eight, but uh, tonight. Uh, Brett Grant, who is my my technically my boss here at KSHP, he's very very generous. Yes. And and uh, so we're thankful to be here at any time. But uh, you know, sometimes they have live shows or they have like a post game um, live show that they want to talk about the games and stuff. We have to kind of accommodate. So. The best way that you can stay in touch with Curtain Call and know exactly when we're going to be on the air on those Sundays is to go to Facebook and like our Facebook page. It's Curtain Call with Eric Ball. You search it up top and you can like it and you can stay tuned with all the uh, upcoming programming and what we're going to be featuring uh, from show to show. Absolutely. And then you can also go to YouTube. Well, and, and that's something that i got to talk to you about because I Glenn hasn't been um, on the show the last two weeks. <laughs> and, and you weren't on the show the two weeks before, before that. that. And so it's kind of like, and he's the grandmaster daddy of all mixed things. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're, we're uh, a couple weeks behind. Yeah, so we got about two shows behind that we got to put on tonight um, it'll be YouTube. Um, and, and what it is, we videotape. Um, oftentimes when we don't have a videotape, we just kind of do a slideshow of pictures so that you can kind of uh, listen to archive footage of shows as well. But tonight, three cameras. And, and and when you see my face, you'll see a little red dot and timestamp because this is the first time I'm using this camera. And That's okay. And it's obviously a you little... We want to know what time it is when we see your face. Uh, it's apparently... I can't even read the time, but it's completely wrong. 4.30. 8.45. I don't know. It's time to eat your McDonald's. <laughs> but it, but uh, I, I put the uh, lowest resolution camera on me, so the sound will not match my face. We should put the lowest resolution camera on the person who hasn't shaved. That, day. that way it just doesn't matter. I didn't shave today, so it's kind of like rough. Well, those of you who, who who know Brandon, uh, you'll notice that he has shaved recently. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, if you're listening right now, you don't notice because... <laughs> I probably sound like I have less hair. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Usually oh. people do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for, uh, for your role as Bean in uh, Love Song, you cut your hair, which was down past your shoulders, yes, and your facial hair, which was down past your shoulders. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I used to braid them together. Yeah. Was, uh, and, and, I, and I made the comment today uh, with Brandon, um, watching his facial expressions uh, during rehearsal today. Um, <laughs> he has a face. <laughs> well, yeah, but, yeah, and not that, because not that, uh, I've always enjoyed Brandon's work, and I've actually seen a lot of... Uh, Eric Hablad is in the building! Oh, and, and Jessica Hurd. And Jessica uh, And we're going to need to... Uh, we're going to have to yeah, take grab, grab a chair awesome. there. And we're going to have to share a microphone, if that's okay. I was just going to... I was just giving Brandon uh, a compliment, and you ruined it. You so. just oh, like to make an entrance, don't you? What were you saying Also, by the way, I'd like to say that every time I'm on uh, Curtain Call with Eric Ball. It's sexy times at 10 o'clock. And, and, sexy, and, time and 10 sexy times are in a glass uh, for you up uh, at the front counter. And I see that you wore a tie, Eric. Thank you. It was Eric wears a tie now. Uh, so. Well, Eric Eric Amblett always Here's wears tie. Oh, oh. Lafroig. Oh. 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 I haven't met you. I'm Eric. Jessica, nice Jessica, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Uh, and uh, so we have three quarters of the cast uh, for Love Song here tonight. Woo! The other one ran a marathon. Yeah, well, half yeah. marathon, rock and roll, which apparently she <laughs> rocked out. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. 
Cool, man. You apparently did really well. Uh, uh, well, welcome uh, to the show, Eric Amblad and uh, Jessica Hurd. Uh, Why, thank you. Uh, apparently, you guys arrived together? No, no, we just have good timing. Yes. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jessica, just so you know, you'll actually have to pull the microphone away. Yeah, you're going to have to share. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Welcome, yeah. welcome. Uh, to, well, now uh, it's happy, happy, happy love time. Now, we're supposed to t ask you about TEDx. Uh, TEDx was uh, an amazing uh, event yesterday. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. The Amblad drinking game. When I get on curtain call with Eric Ball. Oh, yeah. Explain <laughs> that. Say, Explain well, that. He's, he okay. posted this on his Facebook. This is for all listeners to play this game. So, last time I was on the show with Erica Griffin, uh, I tried oh, very yeah. hard to sound erudite and interesting. And what ended up happening is I said the word amazing a lot. 50,000 times. It was <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> And my, my favorite I, I tend part, to say ah uh, a lot. My favorite part of it was when I would re, I would be searching for the perfect word, and ah uh, 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 it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what mine is? Let me tell you something. I say that all the freaking time. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It's just I gotta stop that. The first two shows I listened to it and I was like, shut up. Oh yeah. Don't well, listen to the first two shows. And, and that's that's why I, that that's why I love co-hosting with you, uh, mm. or or being your Robin to your uh, Aquaman. Wow, this um, is a love song, man. It is. This is yeah. lovely. Well, it's nice it's because good. when it's just one person, and you can attest to this, unless oh, yeah. uh, unless you know we have a, a, a special guest host, trying to keep everything going and with the cameras, well, and and doing all that, it's uh, mm -hmm. a little a little unnerving at times. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice to have the back and forth. Keeping your eye on the clock, keeping your eye on Facebook, so you can know what's going on in the world. Making sure you don't spill Gentleman Jack on the so, you know, eating a burger. Uh, you know what? Burger. I... Eric, uh, Eric Amblad, the other one wearing the tie, kept us at rehearsal for like seven and a half hours today. One of the worst, best rehearsals I've ever had. Thank you, sir. The worst, best rehearsal. I like. Um, it's first time in fifteen years I've ever had a line Nazi. Um, so, anyways, anytime Eric, I prefer line fascist. There's yeah. less, you know. So, anytime Eric says fascist, no, um, <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. You take a drink. You take a drink. How's, how's every, a drink? Uh, every time I say to that end, you do a shot. Um, oh, wow. Ooh. That's oh. my newest, latest. That's, uh, that's kind of a cool one, though, because it's kind of like short and clippy. To that end. Yes. That end. And to that end. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. People haven't even gotten to the These guys yet. get so many notes from me, they're like, yeah, to that yeah. end. Right, that's <laughs> good. Okay. All right, get, getting all three of you on the camera. So, so I need to know about TEDx, because he was explaining it, and then he goes, no, 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 no I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let him explain it. Well, I think that what Glenn is really alluding to is that in the last, uh, I think, 72 hours, I've gotten all four hours of sleep, because uh, we've had so much going on. It's like, oh, I'm going to complain that we've got things going on at the Art Square Theater. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> t TEDx had me working from like 8 a.m. until much later than that. And then I had a thing after that, so it exhausted me. Yes, mm. and and uh, uh, a very well received um, TEDx. Yes, it was really really well received, um, and it looks like they're going to do it again next year. And I'm mm. really excited. There, uh, there's a lot of really interesting uh, voices from women throughout our community. So. Mm. It's good times. What is TEDx? <laughs> TEDx. Okay, so there's this thing called TED Talks. It's um, uh, the world of tech, the world of entertainment, the world of design. Oh, wow. Uh, there, I think it was like in LA and in Edinburgh, there's these like huge things and like started off with like Malcolm Gladwell doing the it's, thing on It's like page. a Chautauqua, but cool. Hmm. Cool Chautauqua. Chautauqua. Uh, uh, You're dropping some interesting <laughs> words. Well, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm right with the term Chautauqua. Which I is, prefer uh, my which Chautauqua is, enchilada style. <laughs> Red sauce. Save me. Save me now. With the red sauce. With the red sauce. With the red sauce. Yes, I do. And the chicken powder shot. Oh, you know, this is going to be the world of inside jokes, isn't it? Sadly, yes. Oh, lordy. Or happily, yes. Well, uh, this is uh, Love Song is the third show at the um, New Art Square Theater, uh, right behind Bar Bistro, uh, between Main and Third, off of Charleston. Yes. And opening next Friday, December 7th, running through... The 23rd, I believe? Mm. Yes, through the 23rd. I, I gosh, hope you I know it's through the 23rd, because you have to be there on that day. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'll be there the last week. <laughs> <laughs> I have some other things going on. <laughs> you turn into, like, like uh, what, what's that guy's name who did the telethon? 
Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, I, I know this. I know this because I happen to be uh, in the show. I'm in every show. Um, <laughs> you know something. You wow. really are. <laughs> and I had I had somebody somebody post something on my Facebook. Uh, they te messaged me today, and there's like, you really do a lot of shows. What aren't you in right now? And I was like, mm -hmm. um, I'm not in this show yet. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're doing a show and Glenn's not in it, you better get him in it because you'll be like. Left no, you know what? No, uh, I I I I'm very grateful for the opportunities that the directors in town have been giving given to me and I, I try to be very humble uh, because um, it gets me more work later on I suppose but Cockroach Theatre is having auditions next week oh for Are what? Are going to be auditioning? Somebody else is having auditions too soon. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Well, that's that's, is that Death of a Salesman yet? Uh, no, Death of a Salesman we're going to audition with uh, Troy Hurd, the director, in uh, January. This audition is going to be for Gruesome Playground Injuries, which opens mm -hmm. on January 25th, directed by Levi Fackrell. Mm -hmm. um, two beautiful, meaty parts for, uh, for a man and a woman. And then uh, we're also auditioning for uh, You May Go Now, directed by... This guy right here. Oh <laughs> wait, hold on, hold on. Because this is yeah, radio, he's a big fan. that means I put up thumbs and pointed them at me. That's amazing. It is amazing. Oh, oh, hey. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. Red Bull. I started. Oh, you're fast. gonna be 110, 110 yeah. calories. You did. Yeah. You did. Well, Brandon's you got 110 so. calories. We have at least 110 proof. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the bell? That deserved a bell. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will give the belt to Jessica. Jessica, any, Jessica any, any, anytime somebody says something that should be changed Quipish. or or yeah, or just anything, have fun with the belt. All right. Sure thing. Um, yeah, so we're doing those auditions this coming weekend on the eighth and ninth. We are uh, putting up all the details and information on the uh, Cockroach Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want information on it, you can email auditions at cockroachtheater.com. Awesome. Or you can visit the website, Cockroach Theater. Yeah, you know, that's another way to do it. There you go. You know, you'll that's, so old. that's so 2008. <laughs> you know, and, and, and websites. We, we talked about this the last time uh, you were on the show, Eric, uh, mm -hmm. when Erica Griffin was on as well. That was a fun night, Eric, Erica, and Erica. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Uh, yeah. co Cockroach has been around for 10 years. Yeah, 10 and, years. And, and like your namesake, you've survived various locations. We are adaptable, we are flexible, yeah. we will persist. And now that you... Uh, oh my gosh, Begora Begum. Now, now that you have a permanent space and you've had a couple of shows under your belt there, what are you finding some of the challenges to be in the new space with the things, the respon uh, the responsibilities that well, the an artistic... Well, the new space is garnishing a good buzz and everybody seemed to be really liking yeah, it. Yeah, but Eric has to be responsible now. I oh. do. I have, to, I have to show up places. Oh. Apparently not on time. No, no. Oh, yeah. Hence the tie, though. That's nice. Well, thank you. That's oh, why yeah. he was late. You know. Mm. Right. Yeah, because you I were. It takes a while. Yeah, he he was, should have seen me two hours he, ago. Yeah, two hours ago he was wearing a, a t-shirt and wreck. jeans, and he's like, "I gotta go home and take a shower because I'm gonna be on the radio. Right. I need to look amazing." You can smell me through the speaker. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> oh, delicious. Uh -huh. Smells like progress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that. Yes, <laughs> that's that's no, how it no. works. Did you hear that? <laughs> Smells delicious. So, uh, but what are some of your new challenges? Um, apparently, there are only twenty-four hours in a day. That's a huge challenge. They won't change that. They won't. No, no I, I've really heard. I, I have heard that there can be eight days a week, depending on who you talk to. No, but that's a state of mind, though. Yeah, can I meet your guy? You just clocked I just, it. I just <laughs> went to ring the bell. <laughs> and it went, no, I was denied by the bell. <laughs> It's not a kill shot so in volleyball. It's not Jeopardy. <laughs> it's not Jeopardy. <laughs> this is an eraser. <laughs> Did you direct Love Song with a heavy no hand like that? No whammies, no whammies. <laughs> I have bruises. Oh, man. It is. Yes. It's true. <laughs> we didn't shave his beard off. I pulled in. <laughs> <laughs> we epilated him. Well, you, you pulled half of it. Brand, it Brandon pulled the other half out of frustration. Be like, Argh. <laughs> uh, and Actually, the... And, and Jessica, Brandon, concur or not with me that the rehearsal process has been a very fun, pleasurable one. <laughs> <laughs> she wins. 
<laughs> well, tell, tell tell us about the show and how and what it's about and, and the dyna- dynamic of the people involved because okay. there's only four people in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's only four people in it. Um, the the best I, I think that the the twenty five words ish or less. Uh, yeah, please do it in a tweet. <laughs> yeah, because we only tweet. have two yeah. hours uh, well, to, to fill. It's like the thesis statement uh, of a beautiful your essay. argument. Wow, is there such thing as a beautiful essay? I digress. Uh, uh, um, English teachers unite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, love song is the story of a very lonely um, exile from life named Bean, played by Brandon McClendon. I just McCann. love you, McClendon. 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 McClendon.
Love Song. And if you want tickets, go to cockroachtheater.com or you can hit up their Facebook page. There's information there and everything. But we do need to take a break. And then we'll be right back with more sexy time with Eric. Eric, that's what I'm going to call it for now. I'm sorry. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just so uh, you're aware, Jessica and Brandon, everything is being videotaped. So no matter what you say, it is on YouTube. The commercial that's that this is live. Really? Yeah, right so now. this is why you want to watch it on YouTube. So what what I, yeah, I discovered yes, let's that go last time, time that you were. Jess, we love you. Would you care for a little uh, yes. party? Yes. Yes, she does. Let's, let's, let's leave Eric in the room. I don't know if they have the camera on me or not, do they? Because if I'm the only one in the room, I want to make faces. I think that's one. Thing. Yeah. Are you going to have the little frog? I don't know. You brought Are the Lafroy. I you told do? you. Have you ever had Lafroy? I love Lafroy. By the way, I'm not the one that it's came up with the term sexy like, time. Uh, I just am the term sexy time. Uh, what? It has a very medicinal and very, <laughs> very, very heavy smoke. Very salty. Oh, I love it. I love it's it. It's very salty. That's where you get the band aid. Yeah. I can see that. Salty. Ooh. Did you salt the rim? No. Oh. Sorry. Bad. <laughs> Potentially, never, never talk about the no. rim. Yes. Uh, mm. Floating near the edge. Oh. How you been? I'm doing great, man. I've heard you? nothing but great things about Peter Pan. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I was very, very proud. It was one of those shows that were we didn't treat it like a high school show. We treated it with a very heavy That's hand, good. and the kids brought it. Yeah, I do. And uh, very, very, very proud of them. Thank you. I've been uh, substituting at uh, the academy. Oh, yeah. Uh, doing some acting teaching there. Cool. And there are a lot of kids who remember you. They like, uh, were like, oh, I was the face of the three. And they're like, oh, so do you know Mr. Ball? Mm -hmm. I love him. He's great. Mm -hmm. oh. So you have a reputation. Well, thanks. And, and oftentimes, because it's a, pu a private school, people have a tendency to deflect over there and stuff. And so there's this weird, and sometimes good and sometimes bad. Oh, yeah. But, but um, all good when uh, I've been okay. there. All, all, all good exchange. Red. Yeah, and I have nothing but respect for the Academy. It's, it's apples and oranges when Faith and the Academy kind of... Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's kind of weird, but... You've got an amazing facility there. I'm Thanks, really Peter. jealous of it. Thanks. I'm trying to open it up. I'm trying to get them... There's still white glove in the joint, so I'm trying to get them to open it up to the community a little bit. 60 seconds, we're back on the go. You know where it is? Yeah. <laughs> I love Faith Hello, Lutheran's universe. facility. Love it. Uh, yeah. And um, it's really that, that we haven't, haven't really. Uh, did you get to talk about Peter Pan a whole lot? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got it from a friend. Of mine. Lysander featured it on Love yeah. Taps. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Now you had uh, Troy and uh, Sean on last week. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Any co-host or, or they were your? Just us. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth was going to come on tonight, but she said she couldn't last minute. Oh, well, it's, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Did you say seven Love minutes? you, Liz. We, we won't talk about that on air. I'm gonna, when you start talking, the panning is over. Fingerprint. It's delightful. Oh. Fireman is magic and Linux. Yeah, you're going to talk about that. Actually, are you? There's two hours. Welcome back to Curtain Call. This is Eric Ball. We have in the studio today Eric Amblad, Jessica Hurd, and Brandon McBamaspam. <laughs> and uh, from Cockroach Theater's Love Song. Can, can I do the, redo the intro? Please. Here, let's do it again. Hang on a second. No, no, I just wanted to. This is. Uh, Roger Reeves, and you're listening to Sexy Times with Eric Ball. Oh, we send, should... sending you back to Sexy Times. We need to. We need this to. Is, this is Christopher Eric Reeves. This is <laughs> Beyond the Grave. This is Christopher Reeves sending you back to <laughs> toe tapping good times with. Oh, um, <laughs> makes you want to get up and dance. No. Um, is this disrespectful? I, no, I, I, uh, for, you, you know, if you find this disrespectful, f uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, <laughs> two, two, one. two two one save, <laughs> as in your soul. Save it. <laughs> oh boy, mm. we should never do it at night night mm. time, should we? Oh, it's always good for me. Anyways, we are here with Eric Ambland, Jessica Hurd, and Brandon McTrannycam, and we're <laughs> and we're. 
we're talking about cockroach theaters. All right, did you write a whole bunch of things I down during the night? I don't know what to tell you. And we're talking about cockroach theaters. Brandon Love. McFlavisham. <laughs> Love Song, which is uh, December 7th through December 23rd. Coming up, you need to come out and check this show out because it's going to be really, really great. I don't know anything about the show. They were explaining either. it a little bit. Um, but they said one very important thing. You're going to love it towards the end because it makes everybody want to get sexy. There, there's, a lot, there's a lot of emotional highs and lows in the show. And... Would you say it's a love story? Would you say yeah, it's a comedy? I, well, um, comedy, dark it's, comedy? It's, 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 yeah. It's, I think it's a, a comedy that... I, I uh, when I was plotting out the season, I wanted this show mm-hmm. for the holiday season because I think that <laughs> December can be a very dark time, and I think that this show deals with people who have very dark times, but it has so much hope hmm. and possibility in it that I thought that it was a great thing that we could all use during. That's the interesting that you say that. Usually, the, the holiday season's peppered with the traditional the Christmas carols, the. The best Christmas pageant ever. Like the Christmas no- story. Like the novelty shows. Yeah, like Christmas story. And and very rarely do you ever get into good... There's that like kind of window of December to January that nobody does anything real serious because everyone's on vacation or whatever. Right. But uh, So yeah, this is a great chance to see some great theater. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've said this a few other places, but... Um, You've I, been other places? I've been, I've been doing this uh, thing called theater since I was 12, and... Uh, Hopefully I'll be doing it until I'm... 112. Go there. 112. Okay. I'll do that. Go yeah. There. Thank you for uh, the I, boost for hubris. I believe in you. Science. <laughs> I can believe I can die. Anyway. Uh, at 112. <laughs> so. I like that you choked up then. <laughs> that, was, that was very that was special, beautiful. Eric. Oh my God. He needs a minute. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I hope to be doing it for a long time. But right now, uh, this feels like the best thing I'll ever do. Well, let me. Can I ask Jessica what what else have you been in before, and how has this show been different from stuff that you've done in the past? Well, I have not done a whole lot of here in Vegas. I but you will be soon. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Are you you oh, from, yes. you're not from Vegas then? No, I'm not. I moved here about seven years ago, and I did a, a show here mm-hmm. uh, called Planet Janet, but that was literally eight or nine years ago actually. Mm. And I haven't done anything since. Mm. So well, I just cool. walked in and. Eric said, why do I know you? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> Were you in Planet <laughs> Janet, damn it? It's like, damn. Yes, we we yeah. met around here and there. Um, in fact, uh, she she has a special guy in her life. Ooh. I do. My husband is a critic for Weekly. Ah. But we have different last names. So that was another thing where I was like, I have no idea why you know me. <laughs> oh, why? you know what? I just had a train run me straight over duh what wow i'm an idiot Should okay I, I know who your husband is now oh i'm a total idiot mm. I, I, you know how you know you how you, you can't yourself. sometimes you you're can't are we discovering that now yes i'm recovered i mean discovering that you're an idiot no 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 <laughs> i've known that for a long time but this is just solidifying <laughs> what i already knew. hi eric how are you i i, I, I love you i'm I like going what what's going what's happening it's all fault. Her, uh, we can say his name, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jacob Coakley is my husband. Oh, he's okay. He's a dashing young man. He's very nice. Dashing. Nice. He's very lovely. I enjoy his work. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> and he sometimes yours. <laughs> and he sometimes. Yes. He'll occasionally enjoy yours. <laughs> That's very funny, actually. <laughs> I like that. <sighs> but, it, I mean, so to answer your question, yeah, one. I haven't really... Um, I, I did... God. It seems to me like it's a challenging piece. Oh, it's totally challenging. This is a meaty. From what I read on it, it's amazing. Um, I guess I'm. It's Devil Wears Prada. It's nice. I mean, she fires an intern, her fifth probably, Mm. in as many weeks in the first scene. Nice. Not in the first scene, but you hear about it, and uh, so it's uh, it's. Definitely, like, it, yeah. I just, I don't it's know, a very starch and rigid exposition. Yes. The, 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 yeah. the, char- the characters all have significant story arcs, mm. uh, and that's uh, one of the wonderful things. This is my first time uh, working with Mr. Ambled, and so uh, I've had a lot of firsts with him, uh, and not in the way you may think. But um, but those ways. Yeah, I, you were going for the mic. I but he was hovering over the bow. <laughs> but Eric, Eric has uh, certainly made it. Uh, a, I, I don't know. It's late. Uh, it's, it's certainly been an important aspect for you, for each of us to 
make sure that those characters maintain those arcs and don't become something less than real, I guess. Well, I, you know, I think the, 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 I think you could get tripped up in this play and just make this a play about Bean's love. And it almost seemed farcical. Yeah, yeah, but like everybody deals with love in this and interacts with it and interacts with each other. Everybody grows there's, and develops. It's, it's There's beautiful. this Christmas movie that came out about <coughs> seven, eight years ago called Love Actually. You, you've seen oh, it. Yeah. Uh, I love I, can I tell I, you something? I was going to say and Emmett the I, Otter's and, Christmas, but... <laughs> yeah, junk band Christmas. Junk band Christmas. Yeah, because... <laughs> Anyways, that's kind of like Love Actually. If you yeah, think the twists yeah, and turns and, with, and the the um, with what? with less hands, yeah, they both start from the same. Less hands, more Rowan Atkinson. Yes, yes. Yeah. it's um. But here's the thing: I always thought that should be a stage play. By the way, I thought it was the way it's episodic and everything. I love it. Yeah. But um, that's one of those shows that you watch thinking Christmas Eve, Christmas, and it winds up being more like a love story and, and stuff. Do you, is this one of those? Plays. I don't know why that came into my head while you were talking about it. Is this one of those plays that can that you go to thinking it's this kind of like um, kind of comical, kind of twisty love story, but then it winds up being something with a little bit more uh, foundation? Yeah, I, I actually um, I thought about actually love actually. Yeah, mm. that's almost palindromic. Uh, it's almost oh, like yeah. I'm reading your mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, the bell works now. I thought about love so actually, actually uh, when I was selecting this. Yeah. Um, Love actually is one of the few things that actually deals with love, like it loves love, but it actually. doesn't, <laughs> actually it does, and doesn't do it ironically, um, <clears throat> and I don't think that this takes an ironic approach, but it's, it's not, it's not lovey-dovey and it's not saccharine or anything like that, yeah. I, yeah. I think that, you know, it's real. Brandon and, and, and Glenn and, and Jessica could probably speak to that more since they're actually in the characters, um, and they do it so well. This cast is so amazing. I, I play feel myself. Like a genius that I cast them. <laughs> I, get, I get to play myself. <laughs> I get to, I get to be a little smarmy and and a little s cynical, sarcastic, and a twinge of self deprecation. But you're wait no no self deprecation. That's me. That's me me. Yeah, that's you. you. That's me me. Well, has it like has it been a challenge for you then? I mean, are these are are you trying to approach them as real characters? Or are you just trying to lend? Um, I always I always look at it like this. Well, if it's a musical theater piece, then you have to lend part of yourself to a character that is supposed to be somewhat exaggerated in the, in the context. No, I, of I, 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 is this is this at all like that? I think actually that's one of the more beautiful things is that even though they're all exotic in their personalities and character traits, they're all very real, yeah. even, hmm. even in a modern setting. And like, um, uh, I I can really only speak personally for Bean. It's it's. Um, Although he is a little like strange and quirky in the sense that it's entertaining to see him mm -hmm. exist. Um, thank you, Glenn. Uh, at the same time, we can all relate to a lot of the different factors uh, that that are stifling him in the beginning. And then at the same time, when he does undergo his transformation, when you fall in love, it, it just mirrors like every great story that you have in your life, mm. or at least the beginning of every great story you have in your life. And. Uh, that's cool. And so, yeah, it's not really, it's, you know, it's not so much like, uh, oh, I have to, you know, play this really silly character. It's, it's, it's driven by the really funny things about how people really are. Is it relatable by the young couple or in the person that's been, the couple that's been married for 50 years? Is it kind of run the gamut of, of relatability? You get both. It's great. And, you know, I mean, even more so. I mean, huh. you get the, the, the relationship between Joan and Harry is one of the more beautiful in the show, really. It's hmm. the, the married couple that's been together a long time. Um, Bean is kind of the, you know, looking for love, never had it, you know, and then once he experiences it, it changes his whole world, and mm. then you've got the, the tough burglar girl who kind of softens up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tough burglar girl. Burglar girl. <laughs> burglar girl. <laughs> um, that was the original yeah. concept for the Hamburg work, by the way. Anyways. Yeah, it was intimate. My mind went there, too. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I, this is scary, I, I, bro. This is scary. scary. I, I, I had the same, but I couldn't figure out how to work Robble Robble in. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have. And now and I now have. you did it. <laughs> um, the, there's another uh, you know, love story in it, and that's the... Uh, it's not to be overlooked. It's the, uh, it's the love between a brother and a sister. Hmm. Um, the fa familial love, the platonic love of loyalty and... It's been really great to watch Jessica and Brandon work together. Hmm. <laughs> Voila. Brilliant work. Brilliant work, my dear. Well, cool. I, I, you know something? I, uh, if you haven't had a chance to go down and check out the new space that the Cockroach Theater inhabits, I always want to try to say how Cockroach 
you know, and how would, would a cockroach inhabit a space? They would right. probably they infest, infest it. it. So if you haven't infested the new cockroach theater space over at Art Square Theater, you need to go check it out. Um, yeah, December 7th through December 23rd, Love Song, starring um, Glenn Heath. Oh, no, 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 no. Starring these two. I'm, starring I'm like... I'm like third or fourth. Glenn is in hand or yeah. with. Yes, yes. Start yes. With. <laughs> introducing. Also, <laughs> <and> the <rest. laughs> Yes. Sorry, Jessica Heard, Jessica Afton, Glenn Heath, and Brandon McRobble Robble. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it, it, it's it's one of the it's one of those where there's there's aspects for each character to mm -hmm. be to be featured. Uh, but Jessica and Brandon do have a big chunk of it. Brandon especially, since it does center around his character of Bean, but. Um, Every every it's really nice that because every part I, I I get to play two parts. He does. Uh, <laughs> plays Bill. I play Bill as well. Uh, Who's Bill? You you have to come see it. <clears throat> I don't want to give too much away. Mm. <laughs> He's basically the main character. <laughs> really, really. It's it's a story. It's a story about a bistro waiter, and and his <laughs> and his run in with a man who has become enlightened. Ah. That's that's the true story of love songs. <laughs> and a turkey sandwich. <laughs> Not many people will tell you that. But. Yes, that's another love story. Yeah. The, the love between a man sandwich. and his food. Man oh. and his food. What about the lamp? Yeah, and there is I a love, I love, love that is, I love the lamp. I love lamp. Oh, Lord. We find, you know, we're finally resolving that in this play. It's true. That might be the most crucial point yeah. to discuss at It's life. an electric uh, relationship. Uh, yeah, don't don't get that bell. Don't, don't. No, no, no. no. Uh, should have said that over. Even the bell's upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why did you touch me it like did that? that actually. I feel so I, it, You said it's electric, and I was like, boogie, boogie, boogie. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be. I went electric. Sexy happened. time so. with Eric Bolo. Yeah, you know, it's always sexy time. Well, um, th that's awesome. And, and we do have other things on the horizon for Cockroach Theater. You mentioned the, uh, what was the play that you're directing coming up? Uh, I'm directing uh, You May Go Now by Becca Brinstetter, which ah. is coming up in uh, March. And uh, coming up in January is uh, Gruesome Playground Injuries by Rajiv Joseph, uh, directed by Levi Fackrell. We'll be auditioning for those two shows this weekend at the Art Square Theater. Uh, for more information on that, we are releasing information tonight on the uh, Cockroach Theater Facebook page. Also, you can get more information at auditions at uh, by emailing auditions at Cockroach. And, and this, this is theater with an R E. Yes, theater yeah. with an R E. Because yeah, right. that seems to be the trend. Is it a trend or the way it actually should be? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I always thought theater T H E A T E R is the place. The, is like a venue. The location. It's yeah. Like a venue. That's how, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then theater is, the is like it's just as fancy. It's like drinking tea with your pinky. Yup. <laughs> it's it's like you shopping know, at I Target. I say with an E. So yeah. What can I say? And I say oh. cran cran. Potato potato. And I say. I call couches Davenport's. No. I don't. <laughs> I say crick instead of creek. I say sunda instead of sunday. I say flat instead of apartment and bumper shoot right. instead of umbrella. I'm eating at the Suncoast Buffet. <laughs> Where are my Wellingtons? There are puddles outside. Wouldn't it be great if we all had valets? Ooh. Yes. I, would, I would like to have a valet. I'd have a place to put my pants. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, to that end, shots. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a valet. You do have a bat. Oh, I, I, His the, name is the, Jeeves. Where I can put my where I can put my pants and my coat and my tie when I am done with it at the end of the day. Hmm. <laughs> Jeeves, come and take my neatly pressed pants. It's amazing how you can fit Downton Abbey into one small <laughs> tiny apartment. We should do it as characters from Downton Abbey. Just be like the whole show. <laughs> Today we're speaking hmm. about theater in the round. <laughs> 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 Is it truly in the round, or does someone actually get a seat in the corner? We well, let's not talk about corners. It depends if you room. pay the pay the full farthing. <laughs> it's just it's a smithereen of an idea. I don't even know what that meant. It just sounded vivid. <laughs> smithereens. <laughs> Blow it to smithereens. What? <laughs> what? What? Where are my crumpets? I. There are like British people, Australian people, and one German like wanting to. Yeah, kill we've us offended. Right uh, what culture have uh, we offended? And I yet? think that there's also a few people from uh, Connecticut that mm -hmm. are ninety that are like, whoa, <laughs> let's not talk like that. It's, it's like it's like it's like four in the morning in Connecticut. <laughs> Son of a Kennedy. 
let's not talk like that. <laughs> uh, it was a, it was a little tighter. It was like if uh, Kennedy and Catherine Hepburn had a kid. Mm. Oh, I can tell you how to do George W. Bush's uh, voice. What you do is you take John Wayne and you tighten his ass. <laughs> then you got George W. George W. Bush. I think that might be H. W. Mm. That's W. That's a horrible W. You know what? <laughs> That, there we there go. go. That's a W. Yeah, we're gonna go to war. <laughs> there you go. Actually, yeah. actually, we're gonna go to two wars. We're gonna go to war. Wait, we're, gonna, we're gonna blow stuff up. I'm sorry, sorry. That we're was, gonna blow stuff up. I, I came in as the wrong president. Didn't mean to do yeah. that. <laughs> nobody, nobody can do Obama. <laughs> Brandon does an amazing Van Buren. It's true. I won't do it now because <laughs> he doesn't take requests. And dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> Until you say my name right, I will. <laughs> Brandon <laughs> McGranny Fan. No, Brandon. Nick. Brandon McChester A. Arthur. <laughs> yes, there we go. There it is. You, uh, you know, Brandon. Uh, you, you know, we're we're rambling here, trying to you know fill air, but you've got your own little venture mm. starting up. Uh, Northside. Uh, I do. Why don't, why don't we talk, talk a little about bit that. about that? Because uh, <laughs> because you're gonna you're gonna bring um, and, and I, I've been wanting to get you on the show for a little while with some of the other. Um, Is that what, what the calls have been about in the middle no, of the night? No, uh, the calls in the middle of the night are completely unrelated. Okay. okay. Sort of. <laughs> but I'm in. Yes. Uh, I, <laughs> and and, and I, I I want you to take this as a compliment, Brandon. Compliment. Oh, compliment. Um. Thank you, Mr. You, Brady. <laughs> or cops and applesauce. Uh, you you bring uh, uh, an element, uh, <coughs> or continue forward with an element of theater in town, which I would describe as fringe or edgy. Um, the not I'll shut up, Harry. Shut up, shut up. Or edgy, edgy. Yeah. Yeah, it, some you know non-traditional. You've got you've got a production of Clockwork Orange coming up. Whoa. Dude. It, it, and and that's the this kind of the first that's that's that's, that's, that. the rea- that's, that's the reaction that's the reaction you you that's get ha- that's happening then. and 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 you um it, you were a, f- a former insurgent uh, was, with the Insurgent yes. Theater oh, for wow. years. I served as artistic director. Yes, you did. Heck yeah. And uh, a very integral uh, part of that theater community and a very important aspect of the successful shows that came out of uh, mm. the Insurgent. And now you are doing your own. Um, Venture, uh, if you want to call it that, and and so give us give us a little sense of what we are to look forward to. I know what to look forward to uh, because I have high expectations of you. Um. <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, but I only do theater to please you, Glenn. So <laughs> he watched Clockwork Orange back. You mean you only you secrets. only do yeah. theater to cast me? Exactly. No. Um, uh, and, and I've worked with you well, many, sweet, many, many times. Right, did you adapt it for the stage? Uh, no. I uh, in order to track down the rights, it's actually been the hardest. Like it took me almost a month to finally like get to the. Oh, wow. it, it, it ended up it, none of my efforts actually proved fruitful until I just sent messages to every company that's ever done it in the past like twenty years, and uh, or eighteen years, and I finally got uh, a reply from some group out of Florida. Mm. And uh, Dad's they, garage. They hooked me up, and uh, what's that? Oh no, that, that Dad's right. garage is in Georgia. Never it's mind. Uh, Seneca, or oh, man, I feel bad that I don't have it because she was mm. so polite, but. Uh, Anyway, she passed the information on to me, and I got in touch with them. But uh, that's one of the you know clauses to lock the rights down is you're not supposed to adapt it, um, which is kind of tough because I'm used to I did that with Little Prince, um, sure, for previously, hmm. and uh, kind of enjoyed the. the uh, you, you probably did it control. with uh, RUR and Bug as well too. Um, there, yeah, uh, Bug or uh, RUR especially, I, I had a little uh, freedom just because there was so much, and we had to kind of trim down. And right. it was you know you could kind of change the arc by cutting back on it. But uh, to to secure it all with them, um, you pretty much have to agree to do a, a, the conventional. It's called the Clockwork Orange: A Play with Music, and uh, it was actually written by Burgess after the uh, movie came out, hmm. and uh, with a little bit of spite at the end, like a very, <laughs> a very clearly Stanley Kubrick character gets beat up at the end of the play. <laughs> <laughs> and like a very childish, like, I don't like him display. <laughs> Personally, I can't wait to put on stage. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, anybody who's a Stanley Kubrick fan is like, yeah. I mean... We all love it, but we just kind of want to hit him at the same time, mm. you know. Well, well, it's like yeah. our father. Sure. <laughs> it's, like, it's like hitting the pillow in the therapist's office. Yeah, exactly. It's like, give me that pillow. 
Daddy, I'm so mad. Uh, and uh, uh, when, it, when is this uh, going up, Brandon? Uh, it's going to run January 25th through February oh, wow. 10th. So that's coming up right away. Are you, when are you casting? I will be auditioning next Monday and Tuesday with callbacks probably the Wednesday. For a clock of points. I was going to say, how are you going to do that? We have Tech Week, but then no, we don't. It's going to be co-produced. This will be This will be the first co-production of Ofster Productions, the group that runs the Onyx Theater. Um, so it'll be them and my newest production company, Quadra Nine Productions, will be co-producing the show. Wow, so. and, that's and it's going to be and it's going to be at the Onyx. It will be at the Onyx. Um, it'll be a week after um, their their show before that. The, close, the, the remounting of Sweeney. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say it, so I'm glad you did. And I don't. I, I, I don't. Know it's on the website. I never know these things. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sweeney Sweeney Todd uh, is coming back terrified. for uh, another nine performances, uh, beginning of January. I think uh, January four. Ten performances, you said. Uh, well. Uh, there's a preview and nine yeah. performances. Um, nice. So, and there's a few cast changes. So, uh, hmm. keep it uh, fresh. Yeah, you know. It's now the barber of Seville. <laughs> they added story. the interpreter. Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. That was Glenn, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be very my lips. I want to be curious about that. Whatever Jessica heard. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, is there information that they can get? Where can they get? Uh, it will be from? being posted like Quadra a, Nine kind Theater. Of a, a premature uh, <laughs> announcement, but uh, w- uh, information will be posted as of tomorrow. Is the did, did I? Did I? Oh, did I blow your wall? Not, not at all. I mean, okay. it's it's. I've been. You've been talking. About I, it I finally secured the rights and talked and made sure that the you know that we had permission. And now Brandon and I have locked down uh, how we're going to co-produce the show. That's and right. now it's it's all go and. You know, now, uh, now, as far as uh, space, space that you're going to be permanently locating yourself in, yes. Uh, um, let's let's talk about this a little bit. I uh, I will be uh, moving into it's it's basically an 1800 square foot uh, shop that we we my father used and his friend to make guns, black powder rifles. Um, they're retiring and they're moving, and so I'm taking it over. I'm, I, my plan is to convert it into a 1600 square foot black box theater. Oh, um, wow, cool! And then, yeah, it's going to be on the north side because there's not a lot of venues over there, so yeah. it's kind of a nice layer off uh, Rainbow and Ann Road. Um, and it's kind of um, uh, an homage to uh, the KGPA, a place a lot of us did a lot of work for a while. Uh, this beautiful art park oh, on the huge. east side of town. Uh, yeah. Well, I think you need to restress that art park. Art park, yeah. Um, there's something uh, about the KGPA that stuck with me, um, and uh, it, it was existing in a place where art was not the other thing. Like you go out of your way to do. It's it's where the status quo of your day is art, and it's you know you have to break out of that to go shopping, and you have to break out of that to go to your job, and then. Mm, cool. when, but when you come back, it's you're surrounded by people that want to paint, and they just need a place to paint. Well, we have a t- I'll have a ton of space so people can paint whatever they want. You know, music groups that can't afford rehearsal studios and mm. stuff. I'm not trying to make you know any money off of it or anything, just enough to sustain the place. It's, it's like a it's like a sexy love fest. It's it's, it's a little mm. bohemian, you know. I, 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 well, that's something yeah, that I expect yeah, yeah. to see out of it. Is something very bohemian. Yeah, fire but, pits and yeah. wine bottles, and you know, it's, it's there's. But it's all within the like, confines of the law. Absolutely, <laughs> we will not be breaking any laws. If anybody knows anything about me, I'm a strict law. <laughs> I'm one of those people who likes to follow the law. <laughs> I follow it that way. When it comes after me, I can turn around and be in front exactly. of it. <laughs> I always know where it's going. Well, that's great. I mean, when do you have any like uh, like a one year plan to get this thing it's, open? Or? It's all it's weird because this is all kind of like exploding at the same time. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Currently, I'm seeking my 501c3 for Quadra Nine, so I can wow. run it as a nonprofit. Um, at the same time, I'm this is also the place that I'll be living, so I'm kind of like setting up my loft and going to be moving in and cleaning mm. it out and getting it painted and you know setting up a small little performance area and. Uh, so ideally, that space I want to have running as far as like open for people to come to by around summer, you know, <coughs> for playwrights, sure. or whatever. But you know, a little loose, you know, artistic flow to the whole thing. Um, but yeah, and then the the pressure's kind of on right now a little <laughs> bit with uh, clockwork. We're getting into it. It's uh, well, it just sounds like it's gonna be fun, clockwork. Yeah. So oh, it's a it's a treat. <laughs> bring in the new year it's with a little kind of cool. uh, You've already got some really cool people on your staff for that, right? It's true, yes. He's, um, uh, he's got Erica Griffin, who's a resident playwright. He's got uh, <laughs> Ryan, 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 Ryan Remark, who's going to be doing this. <laughs> yeah, um, as far as. Uh, as far as clockwork, like you've got some yeah, really I'm bringing in. I have um, a core group of people, and I believe in this really strongly, that I've worked with. Um, okay. I've, only, I, I've only directed 
four or five chefs, I can't remember right now, but um, in each of them, I've had Sandy Stein, who uh, did my music design in all of these shows, all original music. Friend, friend of the show and guest, recent guest. Fantastic, mm -hmm. man. I, I can't, I honestly can't speak highly enough about him. He and Love I Sandy. have worked together mm -hmm. now so much that we have this shorthand that makes anything possible. Like, I can, I'm prone to lofty, un- and he he, 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 he's, he, he just, comes through and he has come through yeah and man and he just he's he's one of the greatest people I've ever met he's just a, he's a, a darling man and I love working with him and mm -hmm. what we've been able to do is he pushes me and I, I kind of try to push him right back and eventually we come out with these things that are bigger than either of us had ever anticipated and alongside with that I always bring in Jenna Wurzberger to do choreography uh, cool. from Sandy's music so it's like it's, it's a crew that we've uh, We've worked with before. I'm working with Sean Hackler on Lights, who I, I worked with. Oh, very cool. Play. That's really great. Um, and so, you know, it's it's just it's really exciting. Cool, it's, man. I'm big on getting really good people in to do the things that they do. And you know something? I, I've always said, and there's this there's this old quote that says, a good director is is or artistic director rather is one that relinquishes creative control to the designer, the the, the choreographer, the the lighting, the sound, the. So that it's a shared creative <laughs> process, you you find that uh, really uh, a tourniquet is taken off when that happens. You know, that's true. otherwise the it's a very very flows very freely. The <laughs> all that's a, that's an interesting analogy. You take the tourniquet off, and well, you either bleed out <laughs> or you heal yourself. Well, either way, it's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, that's I mean seriously, that sounds like a huge. Um, yeah. Undertaking, but a great it's effort, exciting. and yeah, it's very exciting it's too. Times, and, and 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 I will attest to the fact that Brandon has uh, a lot of friends in town and a lot of support uh, to make oh. sure that this does succeed. I have wonderful uh, friends. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and that's and that's another wonderful thing, you know, uh, with what you've done over the years uh, here in town, that you have uh, uh, a solid following as far as people who know your work and what you've done. So, and I and I've been uh, happy to be a part of a number of shows. That either directing or a fellow actor and stuff. And when you see uh, Brandon with his amazing clean-shaven face <coughs> and his shorn hair, you'll actually, you you'll actually think he's responsible. The of the earth. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. Which is ironic because all the Jesus hair is gone. It's true. Well, you know, all those people stuff. It's still in his heart. What, what Jesus heart. went to supercuts? What? It's still in his heart. <laughs> It was, do you think he would have if there was a supercut? I, you know what? I think I think Jesus would be a hipster today. Are you saying that Jesus was thrifty? Is that what you're saying? He was courteous, like kind, him. thrifty. Yeah, he was obedient, thrifty. brave, I mean, yeah. you know, cheerful, reverent. Mm -hmm. He also he, to the last he raised some hell at the uh, temple when there was money exchanging. So I mean, it wasn't all that cool tempered. He had some cool magic tricks. Don't get me started, Mr. Heath. Don't get me started. <laughs> so, time for a commercial. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're, during the commercial break we're gonna have a little uh, comparative analysis between Chris Angel and Jesus. <laughs> oh, good look. The fact that he thinks he's Jesus is that what you're saying? We'll start there. Happy we'll, go, we'll start with that. Um, if you're just now tuning in, this is Curtain Call and Eric Ball, and with here Glenn Heath. Of sexy, course, sexy time. Sexy time, and he he is part of the cast of Love Song over at the Cockroach Theater, directed by Eric Adler, who's joining us, and uh, Jessica Hurd and Brandon McClanahan, and I'll say it correctly this time, my friend. Nailed it, you know. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. So hang tight. Brandon, you didn't get to hear Arliss's music. <coughs> no, I know. I, I'm dying. I'm going to talk to you. Please, I'm playing this. Can I have a show? Yeah, I'm sure you can. Oh, you'll get it. It's beautiful. We're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about it. Now. I would like to talk about Arliss in the next segment. Well, uh, we'll go in. I need to plug like uh, uh, an audition from Las Vegas Little Theater. They asked me to plug. Oh, nice. Um, Something else. Hang on a sec. Uh, they want me to plug Arcadia over at UNLV. Mm -hmm. Arcadia is November 30th through December 9th, so it's only for a little bit more this week. It opens past weekend. Yeah. In CT. I guess this weekend. It's still the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it's still the weekend, yeah. It feels like it's midweek. And, uh, and I need to plug the middle school play that's going out of faith because that's what I do. And uh, then I'll, I'll throw it over to you and you can plug one more time the audition's coming up at Cool Crunch. And then slow, we need to maybe transition eventually. We wanted to talk about awards this, this hour. And our theater awards 
What are they? Are they good? Are they are they bad? He, he's going to talk about how he's nominated for one and, oh, and how it affects you differently. You're nominated for two, sir. <laughs> two? What's the other one? Uh, Oleana and Hair. I only knew the Hair one. I voted for Hair. I didn't vote for the Oleana. Yeah, I was uh, up for Best uh, Actor Off-Strip Play. Oleana. No, not till. Uh, well, I'll vote for that one. Uh, yeah, I do want to talk about Arliss. Arliss uh, Estes. In the sound design, you mean? He has composed an extensive original score that is mind blowing. Well, tell you what, let's go back to Love Song for a little bit. Or Love Story for a little bit. Love Song. Love Song. Love song. <laughs> is it Love Song? It is Love Song. Did I say Love Story? Yeah. At the top of the hour, you said Love Story. Sorry, Love Song. I was listening. We'll go to Love Song. Love Story's a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> We'll take it. Does have we'll go back to love song for a little bit. We we don't have to talk about it all the time. So whatever. I, mean, I just want just uh, I don't mind. It's cool. I don't mind. And then yeah, and then let's talk about things that don't have to do with us stroking our egos. <laughs> Although I would glad that I will talk about these guys all the live long day. I am very serious when I say this is the best thing in the world. That's not just like let's sell tickets. That's awesome. This has been the absolute best process I've ever. Had. They're good peeps. That's what you're saying. Right? I love what like, Brandon is saying about collaboration. That's exactly how I feel. I was, that's why I was looking forward to working with you on this. It's been years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it, that, that is some delightful stuff. Can I, mean, I just take it out? It has a dentist office feel to it. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting that you described it as a location. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> A little blackberry, yeah. a little dentist yeah. office. It's got a hint of dentist office. <laughs> it's got a either. lingering <laughs> uh, A hint room. of toy chest <laughs> at the dentist office. <laughs> we got 30 seconds, yeah. Including the LiftMaster garage door openers with their new keyless entry with fingerprint verification. Whoa. Plus products from Real Fire, Craftsman, Fire Magic, and Lemon. Shut up, no card. Custom hearth and door at 657-1280. That's Are you ready? Can I go in? Oh, you're fine. I've got the, I've got this one recording. Uh, I I've, I killed the computer. But get ready. Get that finger ready. I like how Rick Ellis has a curtain call with Eric Ball. Now get this microphone out of my face. You know, he's just he's very fun. Or some book writer of Jersey Boys being bothered by some lowly <laughs> DJ over in Las Vegas saying, Would you do a stinger for me, please? I'm sorry to interrupt your conference. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for listening to Curtain Call. This is Eric Ball with Glenn Heath. We're talking with the artistic director of Love Song. Well, director. Artistic director has kind of taken on a new definition now. We got I'm the artistic bit. director of the company. Of, of the company and the director of Love Song over at Cockroach. We are joined also with Jessica Hurd and Brandon McClanahan, who kind of, with Glenn I'm sorry, Heath, Brandon who? <laughs> McBullabran. <laughs> Mc, uh, <laughs> the, the sandwich hands. Miss sandwich hands. Um, <laughs> Why? <laughs> they, with with Rue McClanahan. With <laughs> Man, I told That's everybody the best in elementary one. school I was uh, related to. <laughs> Even though her last name wasn't spelled the same, they all believed me. <laughs> I never, I had never known anybody named Rue other than Rue McClanahan. Uh, I've never, nev never known anything she, other than cooking. Anyways, they're, they're in Love Song. It opens December 7th through December 23rd. For more information, go to cockroachtheater.com. We do need to talk about a few other things that are coming up. Uh, currently in production over at Nevada Conservatory Theater is Arcadia by Tom Stoppard, a great show. Directed by Christopher Edwards. No, uh, well, it opened November 30th through December 9th. Judy Bailey Theater. I'm sure you can go to UNLV.com and get more information on that. Um, we need to talk about, over at Las Vegas Little Theater, there's auditions December 10th and 11th for The Tale of the Allergist's Wife by Charles Bush. Very, very funny and kind of twisted and slightly naughty. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to British. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a goat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little. Well, maybe there is. So maybe it's set in Scotland. There could be a British yeah, goat. Um, anyways, it's a very funny show um, directed by Steve McMillan. We all love Steve McMillan. Oh. He's great. Um, auditions are December 10th, like I said, and 11th at 7 p.m. at Las Vegas Little Theater, 3920 Shift Drive. Um, and if you want more information with regards to that, go to lvlt.org. Very funny play, a small cast, but, but uh, something you're definitely going to check out. And then i got to do my own plug. Faith Lutheran High School. Now, here's the thing. 
Um, this was I, a wrong thing. If you guys, if you guys have never seen anything at Faith, you got to go over there just to check out our facility. We got a great facility. Oh, dude, it's um, incredible over there. But more it importantly, makes me very jealous. It's amazing. If you want something kind it of, it is amazing. <laughs> You raise a class to faith. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, if you want to take your uh, your whole family to see something kind of fun and light and 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 very very um, impressive, considering that it's done by a complete troop of middle school performers, they're doing cheaper by the dozen. And uh, it's this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For more information on that, Faith Theater T H E A T R E Faith Theater Company dot com. Uh, very reasonable and and, and uh, most assuredly going to be a very enjoyable evening of theater if you're interested. And and we also have I'm going to toss this back over to you, Eric, so you can do the uh, the honors of the cockroach theater stuff coming up. Uh, we have of course a uh, love song opening on December seventh. It'll be running through December twenty third. You can get tickets at cockroachtheater.com. Uh, we also then have coming up in January on January twenty fifth. We have gruesome playground injuries by Rajiv Joseph, directed by Levi Fackrell. Uh, you May Go Now will be coming on the Ides of March. It's by Becca Brunstetter, mm -hmm. and it is uh, directed by Eric Amblad. Beware. Just oh, he's, he's, yeah, I was going to say, you just <laughs> third-personed totally third yourself. Person <laughs> uh, we don't yet know who is starring in those two plays because um, that's... Because Glenn's schedule isn't open. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's actually a really great part in You May Go Now for you, so oh, you should come audition. We don't know who's starting it yet because we are holding auditions this coming weekend on the 8th and 9th. Are you holding auditions for both shows next yeah, weekend? Yeah, both shows. Um, so when you come, you'll uh, be when auditioning I, when for When I come? Both. Or? Yes, oh. when, when you arrive <coughs> at the theater, you'll be auditioning for both Levi and I. Uh, and, and so you'll be doing Two Birds, One Stone uh, as twerk. Who's directing Two Birds, One Stone? <laughs> I'm confusing people. I'm Rue, sorry. are you purposely trying to trip people? Uh, yes, because I, because I, 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 I want them to show up at the wrong place for a show up at the uh, Plaza Hotel, third floor. Uh, it's right next to the bingo room. Yeah. <laughs> show up there for auditions. Bring your tambourine and 3D glasses, right. and and a check made out to Eric Amblad for. <laughs> One, cash. One <laughs> million dollars. If you want to bring checks to Eric Amblad, God bless you. He'll yeah. accept it. <laughs> but in the meantime, go see Love uh, Love Song over at uh, Cockroach Theater, December seventh through twenty. Brian, yeah, Brian's, we open, Brian's uh, song. Uh, we open on First Friday. It's right there in the heart of the Arts District. You brought a script. We should do a stage, like a reading. Of oh, it right hopefully here. they don't need their script. Oh, can I, oh. Fill, I could fill in. I could do the stage directions voice. I could be like that hovering voice. Oh, there you go. He turns stage. You, you could you could read scene yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's true. true. There's no that's dialogue. True. I could. Um, just to look around. Well, no, he said he could read the stage directions, so he could he could actually it's read a, scene it's one. It's actually very cool. Or or radio, I don't yeah, think that would translate. Yeah. It would work. Um, when right. stage direction over radio, I would doesn't just work. tell them I'm doing it really well. Oh, okay. There, there are a few scenes well. that they read like a silent film, and Brandon has done a really great job. He's studied some Chaplin and stuff like that to try and then port those things into a contemporary, modern, hmm. almost naturalistic setting. Yeah. It's been really great to watch. And what is also particularly great is that those scenes, as well as the entire play, are scored by uh, none other than Arliss Estes. Ah, uh, uh, what do you mean? Yeah, scored? We, the whole it's underscored. It's um, uh, quite a bit of it. Like there, there are actually some scenes that kind of get into a, a kind of dream play mm. um, that he has fully scored. I listened to the music for the first time today, and really, uh, he's kind of outdone himself. A he's little bit. he has. I mean, he's he's <sighs> one of the most talented people I think I will ever meet. Wow. Um, I, I feel like one of the smartest things I will ever do is uh, invite him to be resident sound designer and uh, uh, composer. Uh, over at Cockroach Theater because he's just, I mean, the way you yeah. feel about working with Sandy, uh, Brandon, Dude. that's the way I feel about working with Arliss. I worked with Arlie too, and I feel very strongly about him as well. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a genius. He's yeah. a brilliant man. Well, that's cool. I mean, I, I'm finding more and more, um, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. And, 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 you, and you saw them here first because Curtain Call had both Arliss and Sandy on at the same time. That would be a collaboration that would like implode the universe. Well, you know what? I, I actually asked all three guests that week. Uh, Jeff Strong uh, was our, yeah, our yeah, third yeah, guest yeah. that week. And and Jeff uh, is uh, also a musician here in town, but he does a lot of... Um, he's, he's more focused on doing the 
orchestral scores for musicals and doing it less uh, less expensively. Yeah, that's his new venture. Yeah, uh, well, he's been doing it for a while. He actually did Susical uh, that was done at the Henderson Pavilion recently. Sexy terms. Uh, and uh, I've actually anytime you say Susical, I get a goosey. Yeah, and and, and <laughs> it's it's somebody, uh, Mr. Amblad, that I've uh, actually put uh, in touch, uh, hopefully with uh, Joe Hines. So oh, brilliant. Hopefully, uh, we'll see. We'll see okay. what happens. Uh, but I actually put it up to the three of them to write uh, huh. a new theme song. For, Did uh, you? for curtain call? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Baby. I'm wait. I'm waiting for it. I haven't heard anything yet. So if you boys are listening, get on it. Quit doing this crappy love song, Clockwork Orange stuff. I mean, come on. <laughs> we need to get the real music really? here. No, really. You no. need sting. No, no, not really. Not really. Not really. To hear the music. You heard the music today. It ain't oh. crappy. Oh no, 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 no. And and Arliss should. No, you don't understand. That. <laughs> that's I'm Glenn, kidding, that's Arliss. Glenn's humor. That's what I, I do. Know, that is <laughs> he he should know. Come see the show. You'll 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 see me you'll see me do it for an hour and a half. <laughs> it's um it's uh it, his music is so good that uh, I think that we're going to try and put it up on iTunes so that when people wow. come see the show they can then buy his music afterwards. He has so much that he's put into this. That's fantastic. Uh, right? It's a whole layer. Of, it's like it. it it's its own character. And it really, like, to, to, oh, it's going to be amazing to watch it interact. It really is yeah. going to destroy I can't it. wait. And this is some of the best stuff I've ever seen Brandon do. I'm not saying that to sell theater tickets or whatever. I, As a fan of Brandon McClanahan. Uh, and this is, There's not <laughs> enough of them. <laughs> There's not. You know. uh, oh, the, I, I loved your work in Golden uh, Girls, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's four of you in the show. with Betty. Um, but yeah, everybody. Who's the, the BR for? <laughs> that would be me. It would. It really would. I've got the voice and everything. It really would. Rose. <laughs> Rose. You know, Where's my cigarettes, Rose? The youngest. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's it's true. true. It's still Getty. The if you would have asked me girl. if Betty White would have outlived everyone else, I would have never put my money on that. No. We all never. knew Rue was going to go, though. I, yeah. You know something? Oh my god! She kind of. Have you ever noticed that as she got older, her face kind of got let more, it, it like pointed in. It's yeah. like there was a vortex in her nose, yeah. and it was all going in. She just couldn't wear glasses anymore. It just uh, everything. It started flattening and going. She looked like a Pekingese <laughs> by the end. She was. She was really. Wow. She did. You look at wow. the last days of Rue McCann. I, I don't mean to be rude, but check it out. I, wow. These are things that yeah. I think about during the day. Is, is this from the Coming documentary 2013, or 2014 season at Cockroach Theater? The last day. Of Rue McClanahan. McClanahan. Starring Brandon Brandon McClanahan. McClanahan. Not spelled the same word. Still living. An homage to my Aunt Rue. It's my one man show about being a liar in elementary school. (laughs) Comes out with flour and water. Foodie joke. I thought it was was butter and flour. (laughs) Thank you for being a friend. Mm. I thought it was butter and flour. I guess that I was talking about slurry (laughs) McClanahan. Oh, you've had slurry. <laughs> He's good. He's fun at parties. <laughs> slurry McClanahan. Is that is that Rue's fifth cousin? Bob slurry oh. McClanahan. <laughs> well, listen. Happy I'll... happy fun times with Eric Paul. Brought to you by Gentleman Jack. <laughs> And Red Bull. And in it's my amazing. case, and, 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 and in my case, Red Bull because someone has to drive. Uh, <laughs> Amen. Oh, you you are giving me a ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> Can I get another free? <laughs> well, I wanted to. Uh, you know, every show we try to talk about uh, just a topic about theater in general with our guests and kind of crack open your noggins and see what you have to say about it and lend some insight. And I posted something on Facebook and a couple people have commented on that from the community. And what the, what they wanted to hear about. Or, well, more so what they wanted to say about the topic. And the topic today, I thought, would be a good one, is, is awards in theater in general. Cool. Like, like kind of like... What, <laughs> what, are you, what are you looking at me for? Well, because Shh. technically, technically, this will, this will kind of hit this home me. for you a little bit. Because right now you're nominated for two awards on BroadwayWorld.com. That's true. And, and before we do that, my, my producer is telling me we need to take a quick... Quick break so that we can nice. switch over. Nice, yeah. because that's a cliffhanger right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We will come, tell you what come, awards. Come, come back and you'll hear what two <laughs> awards I, I've been nominated for. So just for. hang tight. We'll be right back. Sexy fun times with Eric Ball. This is Sarah Salt. You will do it. And you're listening to Eric Ball and Eric Ball. Eric Ball! Oh, I'm glad that you found uh, today's rehearsal really bad. Um, like I said, a lot of firsts. I've never had that experience. 
Um, and it's one of the few times I've actually seen a stage manager with the forms printed out for line notes. Which is mm. It's only like the third time in 15 years I've ever had somebody give... My wife does that. She's a hell of a stage manager. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 I think from now on, she's I'm doing. Was she, she freelance? She's doing Taylor the Yellow just right now. That's my. Key. That's it. She's she's an English. Though. She's an English teacher, English teacher. at uh, she's, yeah, she's, Faith. At Faith. Yeah. Nice. She's directed too. She directed Peter Pan. Yeah, I. Um, she's. I'm always looking for good stage managers. Because there is a dearth of them. We found a few good ones at uh, Cockroach. Well, she work with she, Kathy. She's a good director. Oh, I love Kathy. Oh, I think Kathy's amazing. Kathy's one of the few okay. really great stage managers I've worked with. Okay. Kathy Ostertag, for those of you watching in. Oh, hold on. Look. There you go. Kathy Ostertag, for those of you watching in. I got, last time I was on here, you did not tell me that this stuff was being broadcast on YouTube. I was probably drunk. So, in the. Um, <laughs> That's our little secret. break when I watched it and discovered my penchant for amazing. Oof. Is that is that French for pension? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> pension. <laughs> <laughs> for uh for liking. Uh and uh, uh it, it was uh I, I started talking and I was like what did I say during the break? What did I say? <laughs> oh no, oh no. We like to keep that air and around here. There was towards the end. I started to sound like I was about to get catty. I didn't, but like it looked like I was. It was like I was giving the teaser uh, in, oh, the, yeah? in the last break. Like you just gave a teaser for the next segment. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like I was like, I am gonna talk some crap about people. Huh. You wait. You just <laughs> hang in there. You hang in there. Oh, it's done. <laughs> You thought you've heard so you heard something. You start to now. sweat as you were watching. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, I was God. like, what did I say? Did I say anything? I don't think <laughs> I did. I think, I think that I was really I good for every. Oh. <laughs> mm. It's like the time we talked about vaginas the whole show. Thank you. And it's like I thought to myself, well, vagina you can say on the air, but if you say it on the air fifty thousand times, <laughs> I'm going. How did this come up? I don't even remember. We were talking about. I said something and I just said vagina, and he was just and everybody looked at me and I was like, what? You can say vagina on the air. And, and, then, just like, and then Gilbert Gottfried got uh, into yeah, he was fifty shades. Yeah, and I started, shades I, started of reading, I started reading Fifty Shades of Grey as Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> or, <laughs> no, that was that was oh, pretty much gold goodness. right there. Bob Saget, he stuck <laughs> his penis in my vagina. <laughs> oh my god! I was caning. <laughs> I was caning. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's maybe my favorite like <laughs> word in the whole. Thing. I was. I was sitting in six yeah. kinds of fluid. Not <laughs> <laughs> or... Which would you love? I love Malarkey, the keening. Keening, you just, you never hear keening. And so, there I am, keening and masturbating. I'm sloshing around in six kinds of fluid. And I can remember seeing myself, observing myself from up above, looking down at this puddle. I remember... Thinking very distinctly. <laughs> oh boy. And we're back with Curtain Call. We're in the studio with a. Oh, you just missed. If you watch the YouTube archive. You need to watch the YouTube archive. Watch the YouTube. I, I just read a little passage from Scene 11 as Gilbert Gottfried. Well, and if you recall in the past, he did a little excerpt from Fifty Shades of Grey as well. About Gottfried. vagina! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, children. Good times. Faith students, I hope you're listening. Hey, hey wasn't I, wasn't hey, I nominated? Late night sexy times. I, oh, you know, se segueing from that into, wasn't I nominated for a couple of Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Speaking of honors. That's right, you're um, <laughs> yeah, so anyways, we're going to uh, kind of break the, the proverbial seal on <laughs> this topic. We were going to uh, talk about awards and honors and, and things that are bestowed upon actors and theater companies in general. We're talking community theater here. You can kind of expand it to like bigger and... and, and I, I think the context yeah, but uh, to other things will... Yeah, well, we'll kind of start with community theater honors. And the idea, and my question is this, and, and kind of we'll go from there, and, and we'll joke about uh, Glenn's particular situation. Um, <laughs> but I'm pregnant. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry about it's that. hilarious. Oh, he's going to be a soccer player. Um, is is do, do awards bestowed on community theater actors or theater companies or designers or whatever? I mean, wh what is what? 
are they substantial? Are they beneficial? Are they useful? Are they supportive well, resources? Let's, let's, or are they complete waste of time? Let's, let's ask the, 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 the relevant question. What awards are you talking about for community theater? Well, here's the thing. We can use Las Vegas as an example. Please, but, because but, that's what I'm... Yeah. Here's what awards are in Las Vegas. Well, there's only... We, you just want us to mention... No, 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 no. Because that's... Two no, 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 no. Because BroadwayWorld.com <laughs> is across the U.S., okay. For let, every city, let me that, mention two that okay. I know that are, are <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm, I'm taken, serious, Mr. Amblin. That are taken rather um, uh, poignantly, you know. <laughs> oh, that are that are taken rather there poignantly. Um, one is uh, Anthony Devale at the Review Journal has his own Tony, Tony in quotes right. Right. award um, that he bestows upon. Every th he breaks it down everything from designers to costumes and and, 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 and that, that and that's really all I can think of that is well, in Vegas. Well, the Review Journal itself does a best of Las Vegas, and it, they do True. bestow City it on Life a does City a Life does a best of. So there's like yeah. okay, and it kind right. of encapsulates uh, theater uh, companies. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but companion, but are the best do? actor and a best director? Um, okay, uh, seven magazines. Oh, yeah, my question, my question is: Are those awards community theater, or do they incorporate? the strip shows as well. I think they do. And, um, and that's where, I, that's where some, I, I some find some a failure in the delineation between well, and, Vegas and Awards. Me, and it, boldly, let me cross over Please. to well, how you are you are uh, involved in all this. You are well, nominated no, I, well, for two yeah. um, awards with BroadwayWorld.com, which has, and if you've ever been, ever been to the website, they have like little sections for each city, you know, Chicago and San Francisco and blah, blah, blah. And then they have a Las Vegas section. You click it and you can see uh, stories and things that, as it pertains to Las Vegas. And they have a geographically, you know, centered awards for Las Vegas. Sure. That includes, and it's a weird... It, it, How, it's it's like it's, somebody from New York who reads about Las Vegas right. decided to make some awards, <laughs> and and it's this veritable cornucopia of because some things law. some things are, are community theater and strip shows and some things and some are, things and some things are like when was that show ever in Vegas Yeah, um, I, I I I will I, I and I don't want to interject and, and I'm cer and I'm certainly not going to ask people to go to. Uh, Vegas slash broadwayworld dot com and, and vote for me. Um, Glenn H E A T. But uh, here, here's here's my stance on it. Um, I feel honored in the sense that I was nominated by somebody I don't know. It was not as if my director nominated me or mm -hmm. my publicist said, "Hey, let's get you a star in the Hollywood you have a Walk." Publicist? No. Yeah, wait. Why don't um, they contacted us? You haven't met Jerry? Jessica deserves a publicist, too, I think. Let me introduce you to my publicist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you will listen to this man. And, 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 I, and I guess for me, um, I, I was nominated for uh, my portrayal of the character John in Oleana that I did uh, earlier this well, year. Uh, performance. Uh, thank Stupid. you. And, uh, and then for uh, a best featured actor in a musical for uh, my stint as Margaret Mead in Hair. Sexy. Uh, which was a lot of fun. And, and, um... That, uh, <laughs> it was fun. Nip Do <laughs> not ever refer to that as delicious. Uh, and, and Brand Brandon, uh, Brandon saw, saw me in my nipple clamps and vinyl, uh, mesh, uh, thong. In Oleana? No, 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 no. Uh, It was a very fringe, edgy. I was yeah. just gonna say. Uh, but, but, it, here, 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 here's they where... Just brought the symbolism to another level. <laughs> I know. Where, 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 where I stand with it, uh, I, I am very grateful to have been recognized for Oleana because that's one of the hardest shows I've ever had to do. Mm. Uh, and I thank Joe Hines for the opportunity uh, to do that show because um, it did stretch me um, a as an actor in a lot of different ways because it's a two-person show. It's mammoth, well, it's which, a, it's which a is really hard. hard show, yeah. and, um, and it's a very... Thematically, uh, it's hard. It's, it's, a, it's, it's one of those a, things that you got to chew on. It's like... Exactly. It's it's not it's not uh it's, it's not your it's a thinking man's theater. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I, I feel honored for it and um it, it would it be nice to win sure but you know what I'm thrilled for thrilled for the nominations. Let me ask you this though as as it as it pertains to the discussion topic let's say you do win okay how how is that going to affect you as a performer? It it changes uh, my uh, theater resume to an asterisk by uh, the role and. Mm. It, as, as I, uh, yeah, I, it, I have found that it does two things. I have won twice an award. This is your moment. Go ahead. Do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> was it for a show that so, Brandon directed? It, no. You did it for me. Uh, I, uh, no, I anticipated <laughs> it. I just jumped on it. You got it. Uh, I won um, a Tony Award uh, in 2000. Uh, 
seven for my betrayal in Frozen over at LBLT. Mm, mm. And I won in 2009 for the Dumbwaiter, uh, my betrayal in the Dumbwaiter um, uh, with Fandor Productions during the Beckett Festival. Mm. Um, the first thing I will say is, was I the best actor that year? I don't think so. For example, in the Dumbwaiter, I was op acting opposite Drew Yonamori, who I thought I was the supporting actor for. I thought that he was the main character. Mm -hmm. I thought that he did the best job of anything I saw that year. Well, Drew Yonamori is an amazing actor. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. He's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Ring the bell. No, it's, it's, that's for you, Drew. Uh, yeah, is it, so uh, is it, do, do these awards actually reflect who is the best? No, but I will say this. I think that these awards are great. I think that awards at any point are great. Why? I think that if you get past the sense of competition, uh -huh. at which point there is like, oh, ego. Like, I could be like, I was an art this year. Why wasn't I nominated? And Glenn mm -hmm. was. Oh, Geo was. Gosh. Yeah, and Geo, and yeah, and Geo was. Am I? <laughs> no, but what this does is it creates conversation. This is what we're doing right now. We are talking about and, and, these and great I, shows that happen. And, and it, it, it's, like, I know about, when I first found out about Signature, mm -hmm. was because of these awards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, are, there's a lot of theater going on in this town. Yeah. We can get so insular with our, you know, particular companies and productions that one of the ways that we as a community community can really deal with the fact that we have a theater community is we have the conversations surrounding these awards. Well, it's, inter I love it's, it's interesting great. that you say that. Lysander uh, Ab Abadia, Abadia. Oh, Abadia, Abadia. Lysander, he posted Abadia, on Abadia. Um, my Facebook about this topic. He said, anything that brings awareness to the art form is positive in his book. Yes. Especially in a city such as ours where theater and other art forms are being systematically cut from children's education. Testify. It is up to us as the theater community to pick up the slack and create those opportunities for both education and entertainment. If awards can grab that attention of the audience out there for even just a minute, then they are proved necessary. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah! hallelujah. Yeah, there we go. I'm Thank you, uh, Lysander. I'm a witness. Lysander Abadia, uh, one of our friends with the uh, LV Taps. Check uh, their show out every Monday or Tuesday. It's uh, They record it on Sundays, but... Is it lovetaps.com? Yeah. So, uh, lvtaps.com. You can catch yeah. them on Stitcher um, and uh, through yeah, Facebook Stitcher. as well. It did, who saw uh, The Pill Man? Did uh, you guys see The Pill I Man? Did. Oh, oh yeah. dude, let me just say. Phenomenal. I hate those guys because. <laughs> because <laughs> I loved it so much, I hate them. I seriously. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm artistic director of a company. I feel like it's my job to raise the bar for this. Right. this yeah, but, but, but if they're and raising the bar for you, doesn't that mean that what you are doing with Love Song just makes them go, I hate you, Eric Amblett? Let's hope. I mean, listen, I got to tell you, The Pillow Man is one of the best things I have seen in the last 15 years. Huh. And Anywhere. And right and after their uh, Dick Johnson private eye at the Vegas Fringe, which also was like blue. Yeah, blue dude, blue. those guys it's are so poor Richards players. They can. Yeah, but if I, if I recall Shorts. correctly, um, the reviewer didn't ne necessarily think it was that good. Well, don't, they, don't they, you, they, I think well uh, which, which reviewer? Are we talking about Jessica's husband? Yeah, I mean, they always get some mix. But what I, what I know is this. Is like, I, I saw it, and I walked out, and I thought, man, i got to step up my game. Happily, uh, like I said, Love Song, I think, will be the best thing I ever do. Uh, mm. I think that it is in that conversation. If I were to say what is best, I don't know because mm. Love Song and The Pillow Man are so well. And, and 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 isn't it isn't it an arbitrary thought? I mean, uh, yeah, it is. I, 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 I love Tony. Totally I love Tony Devale, uh, and, but you know, uh, he completely panned Joseph and the Amazing Te Technicolor Dreamcoat out at Super Summer Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and Eric, you and I can both attest to the fact of sellout crowds, and that so his one opinion of giving us a you know a bad rating. Uh, that's his opinion, and and he's always stated in his um, his columns that his opinion is simply a means of creating, creating this discussion. discussion. Yeah. Exactly. So so I re I respect Absolutely. him oh, immensely sure, for sure. that. Do I agree with him all the time? No, but a lot of times when he gives something a bad score, I want to go see it. I mean, more so, yeah. more so to see it. Really? Score, right? um, his F's are very compelling. Yes, <laughs> and and but but and and, and entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I actually like reading his reviews oh, yeah. because they're as entertaining as they are informative, and and, and sometimes it, more so, and sometimes more so. Um, Bell. Now, the <laughs> um, <laughs> geez, and we've been talking about 
Diwali a lot on this show. We should get that. Well, you know, that for that should be the drinking game. Well, yeah, no, and. It, it, he he sure. is he's the state he's the staple he's the consistent well, reviewer yeah. in town and, I, and I'm sorry the show he's like the Frank Ridge of Las Vegas right? well you know what I think Except we ought to, I think we ought to get all the Frank former Ridge. reviewers we can get you, we can get your we can get your husband on here oh he'd like it we could get former uh, yeah, he, writer well, David will he talk, on will here. He talk more than you yes with Anthony Devale <laughs> on here and we can have a mud wrestling competition uh, I'll, I'll sign up for that and I will give them the first ever curtain call award. To the reviewer, but didn't didn't we do curtain call? No, we, we need to. I thought we were going to do. You should do an end of the year like deathmatch series. You get all the artistic directors from around the the, the valley. Ooh. You get all of the reviewers from around. Mm. And just have I'll them get fight in mud with a uh, Brandon McClenahan again. Yeah, but you'd have to, you'd also have to get in the Today. ring with. Uh, with Ruth Palaleo and Oh yeah, we'll get it. Oh, I've been send me T J Larson's and, blood. Yeah, I was gonna say and, and and maybe maybe a few board members from Super Walter Summer. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a brittle match. <laughs> God love you, Super Summer. I don't think I can get in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the British National Theater right there. That's the <laughs> They're just like, damn me. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, this is sloppy. I can't get in that mud, it's dirty. <laughs> you just went slightly Austin Powers. I have no idea. Well, listen, I got another so comment It's 11, here. It's 11.30. Got another comment here. Wait. Michael, Michael Voivodich. Michael Voivodich. He's actually online right now? Mm, sort of. Don't make he, it a life. No, no he it, posted this it's uh, an Voivodich. hour ago. Voivodich, he's the uh, artistic director at Broadway, Broadway Bound, Bound over at Summerlin Dance Academy. I hey. love finding out about new things. Oh, he's great. I have never met him. Oh, he's wonderful. Um, How you doing, Mike? He's uh, he, he writes, I'm on the fence. I get the whole idea of the Tony Awards, Oscars, and others. What I don't understand... Wait, Os Oscar... Oscar Awards. The Oscar Goodman Awards. Yeah. <laughs> For the best the meat For the best, best meat in, in town. town. <laughs> I'm cutting you guys off. What I don't understand... <laughs> I'm cutting writes, you off then. There goes the camera back to me. <laughs> Give the boy a little bit of control in this man. What he writes, what I don't understand are awards and recognitions we have in our town, like the Review Journal does, ooh, ironically called the Tony Awards. My problem with them is that they are judged on community theater performances and shows that are graded. It's extremely upsetting when a show that you're watching or a part of gets a bad grade. We have to remember the people that are involved in community that in the community that do theater. They don't do it to be praised or insulted. And for most, uh, um, most of it, they do it at, along with their nine to five job is what he's trying to say. Yeah. So Oscars, Grammys, cool. That's their livelihood. Judging community theater works and people who are uh, providing entertainment for free. That should be judged at a very different level. Well, you know what? It, you know, speaking of actually doing maybe curtain call awards, uh, we should actually go to the theaters themselves and have you know the artistic directors nominate one of their shows and 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 have well, our listener have, have, have our have our listener uh, uh, baseball. People? They have to nominate shows from other theaters. E or even how about, e like even People's choice awards. Even better and yeah. even better and we can put it up you know and and have the local mm. local p community vote. Uh, we may we may not get as many you know responses as we'd like, but we may get a little bit more honest reaction and and maybe a little bit well, more feedback. And here's the thing: what are we, I don't know everything. You gotta have to. You ha everybody has to understand a theater in its very nature, in its purest form, is very subjective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know I mean? really? The observation, you know, the audience perspective of sitting and enjoying theater. Purely subjective. I mean, how they take it away. I mean, every time I go see well, a movie you, or a theater, or, or drama, or drama versus comedy versus musical, you're going to have a different audience. Yeah, you walk away from well. musical into the is a different genre from drama or comedy. I'm sorry, that's a whole different topic. Okay. Musical drama, musicals are dramas and comedy. No, no, no. What, I, what I'm what I'm saying is that your audience. You may have you, a, a, a different core, you may have a core audience that enjoys. Oh, yeah. I, I will okay, say I signature productions. You yeah, you yeah. have you have a core audience with signature productions, yeah. and you will not get those same people to go see a show uh, at yeah. uh, without music. Right. So so yeah, no. I, okay. Which I, I which, which is why you have which is why you have these you know four or five hundred seat auditoriums as opposed to black box theaters mm. because the black box theaters are very niche. Uh, very oriented, yes, very. Uh, You're very facing your and 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 and, and, and then and then and then having awards that relate to one another. that kind of thing. It, I, I don't think it necessarily compares. I think, I think actors in general and directors, they like the recognition, and I think 
for me personally, I like that recognition. I could care less about awards. Nobody's going to see them. If yeah. it, I mean, uh, I, I every every time I see Joe Hines, he shows me his Tony Award. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he keeps it. He's so that. true. He has like it a keychain so version. He does. And he it opens beers. He, he keeps it, and, and he's, he's like. He's also got a, a laminated version of it, but it's like credit card size. You yes. Pull it out of his wallet. Yes. I think we uh, have to pay a royalty every time we say Joe Hines' name. Yeah. That's, uh, I think we should contract. drink every time we say Joe Hines' name. It is costly. It is. Or maybe we get paid. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, let's call him. I, un- unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to pay us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but. You but know, I, 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 just to speak to, to Mike's comment, you know, I, I I don't like to consider that what we do in this community is something other than what everyone else in the world does with theater. I mean, I've been doing theater in communities, whether it's in Boston, New York, Seattle, or right here in Las Vegas, almost all of my life. And every time I do it, I want to put it out into the community. Hmm. Um, when I put something up, you know, do you consider I would it professional rather, theater? I would rather get an A or an F than to get nothing at all. Because mm. to get the A or the F is the acknowledgement that this is happening. It is in the conversation. People in Summerlin will know that we are doing a show. People mm. in Boulder City will pick up the RJ yeah. and know that there's theater vibrant and alive in this city. And to say, you know, we should go easy on each other, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that there is so much talent and so many dedicated people that to coddle each other, I'm not suggesting that's what Mike's saying, but it sounds like the idea that we should go easy on somebody because they have a nine to five job. You know what? They are so dedicated that I think that it respects those people I don't, that have the nine to five is, job is that, to treat them seriously is, and acknowledge their. Is that the um, interpretation you get out of it, Eric? Uh, because no, well, got, because uh, you and I both know Michael fairly yeah. well, and and I think you know some of what he may be talking about is because Broadway Bound is different than oh, yeah. anything else because it's it's like yeah, it, 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 it's it's like it's like uh, your students don't get graded. Um, you know, for Tony now, Awards or can anything Can I tell you like something, that. though? That's interesting that you say that, because um, a couple of my um, colleagues over at Faith Lutheran said, why doesn't Anthony Davale ever come out and, and, and review Faith Lutheran shows? And I go, well, because he only does Las Vegas Academy. He doesn't do any other high school. Oh, so I didn't think he did any. Oh, he did the Academy. Okay. He, he does the Academy. Academy. And, and they said, well, why is that? It was, it's my understanding. I asked a theater teacher at the Academy like 10 years ago once, why, why you know, Davale only does that? And they said uh, um, that it has to do with the fact that state funding goes to the academy, much in the same way the Rainbow Company Theater gets okay. some money from the state, mm-hmm. you know, and they want recognition. It's part of the RJ's agreement with the city or something that they will do that because it's the Fine Arts Academy of Las Vegas. Okay. You know what I mean? So I understood that. Um, I've invited Mr. Diwali uh, along with uh, Mr. McKee and, and your husband's cordially invited. Uh, anytime <laughs> they want to come and see, I just love the dialogue. You know, I love to hear, like, yeah. when Lysander and, and the group from Alcatraz and, 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 and came, and that's what I was going I to loved bring um, talking with them about the show and, and the progress. Because here's the thing. At that level, it's educational. And we're trying to set up and give them an offer um, and execute, for lack of better words, um, opportunities for them to grow. And I think it's great that they that they review the academy, and I totally understand why rev- the review journal won't do other high schools because you're opening a floodgate there, and that's all they would do nine to five. Right. So it's kind of like, pff, how do you I, do that? But but I will say this: that on from a director standpoint in a high school that takes great pride in what they do, and I like to say, and this is a biased opinion on my side, that I think Faith does amazing work. I would love for them to get some feedback. Good or bad, and this is, I think, in direct relation to the awards conversation. Right. It's yeah. not so much that 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 it's a gold trophy that you'll buff and keep on your mantle. It's more about the recognition it, and acknowledgement you. of the fact that you're trying to do something lasting and worthwhile. And and and, and I th- I think you do see that, but the students don't. You yeah. have you have more of the life experience to to see hard, the audiences, yeah. and you can go, okay, the the consistent audiences mm-hmm. that we've been getting and Peter Pan a very fantastic production. so funny the kids always say uh, oh do we have a sold out crowd and it's like guys you That's don't understand we have an 800 seat theater yeah. right. there's some Broadway theaters that don't have 800 seats it's hard right. to sell out 800 seats yeah. Yeah. you know it's like don't base it on that don't yeah. base it on just ba- are you did you 
garnish a good show, good yeah. reaction. I've done yeah. plenty of shows to four people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that's and that's something you know the black box theaters. That's something to expect. Yeah. But with uh, what you were saying, uh, well, I don't know if we want to expect. No, 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 no. But 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 with <laughs> black box theaters, there is an expectation that because uh, of where you are, uh, what you're doing, the type of show, the risk taking, the yes, sure. and that's and that's what, yes, and that's and that's a, that's a whole other topic in and of itself is the risk taking that TV some TV studios TV. will do, or some theaters, not studios, some theaters will do that others can't. Um, right. I, I, I doubt you'll ever see Signature do a big risk taking show. Much in the same way, Super Summer Theater, not a whole lot of risk taking, unless it, unless it's the September right, they're, they're, show. It's not, it's not no, what they're interested in. Right? No, but yeah. you've got a, you've got a risk show you're uh, co-producing next summer. Well, I and, but, and it's yeah, a risk and it's a risky show. I knew uh, that Clockwork Orange is a risk show. Yes, but 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 he's also yeah. Brandon's doing it in a black box environment. Uh, you would never do a Clockwork Orange. It would have to be the Disney version. Sure. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, oh, my, my I, 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 I do. I do want to. Uh, Happy polylogy. Be, before before uh, the the topic moves forward, I, I do want to go back and talk about uh, how you need to vote for Glenn. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, LV taps. Love taps. Uh, Love taps. Uh, ben, Max, Lysander, uh, Carol, Carolyn. Um, uh, they go see so many shows. And they do mm -hmm. yeah. talk about all the shows. And oh, so, yeah. you know, there is some recognition. You're Faith Lutheran students. There, there's where they, there's something? where they can get some I recognition. I really, really appreciated that. You know, not because they really enjoyed it and they said nice, pretty things. Well, if they, they hated it, I would have loved that they would have talked about it. Because, absolutely. Passionate because response. Yeah. It's ju you, you have no idea. The kids loved it. Mm -hmm. I lo and what's so funny? Let me tell you what so I think it was Ben, he dropped an F-bomb like right in the middle of the review for Faith Lutheran. And he and they acknowledged that this is Faith Lutheran, so we better clean up our address. They did, I, I don't remember what they well, said. Although the, they, the, yeah, the rest of the 45 minutes, they didn't really care. And yeah. then they dropped an F-bomb. It was so funny because the kids were like, Ooh. and then they looked at me and I was like, it's okay. <laughs> it, was, it was really, really funny. You know, like That's what I'm talking about. It's the if fact that people are talking about the hard work and efforts creatively of, of, a, of an ensemble. That's, that's why they were excited about it. Not because they liked it. I mean, I was thrilled. Well, and, 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 and you've, got, you've got students as well who aren't hardened by theater. Right. Uh, most, most of us sitting here right now don't need the A review. Right. We, we don't necessarily care. Right. I, it, yes, it's <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's you nice. Know, no, it's it's nice. Yeah, but what? No, what? No, what? Well, let me let, let me finish. Nice. What? What? I, what I'm what I'm saying <laughs> is, I, I think <laughs> everyone in this room and just I don't think I've ever gotten any. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen. You know yeah. what I'm gonna do? It's not worth it. We all want to put out good work. On we all want to do our best. I'm gonna put a on my Facebook status for Brandon McClanahan. I don't need that. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go on Facebook right now and put an A on Rue McClanahan's because you guys won't let me finish a thought. Sorry, what? Hmm. You were saying something? I, I yes, and it was something actually fairly serious that, okay. it, it, and, and not necessarily. I don't know you well enough, Jessica, but uh, I think for the rest of us in the room, <laughs> when when we do a show, we want to put our best work forward, and we can recognize that while we're yeah. on stage, or when our students are on stage, right. or when our players are on stage, or when we ourselves are on stage. That this. This is good. Yeah, but you know something, Glenn? It, we can recognize, like as a director, I can recognize the hard work of my students. You, as a friend who frequently comes to the shows that I, you can recognize it. But to hear it from a third party, yes, somebody who yeah. doesn't have necessarily an and, investment and, 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 and that's what, And that's the difference between actors who have been doing it a long time, right. where it's nice when it comes along, but it's not something we need in order to continue doing what we love. For your for your right. students, yes, because they are at an impressionable age where they need that additional. Oh, am I, am, I, am I? Yes. Am I, it, well, is what I'm doing okay. right? Yeah. I, the only thing I was going to say is that theater is inherently a performance. You have mm -hmm. to have people, and you have to have feedback. Like whether they're sitting there silently or they're laughing or whatever they're mm -hmm. thinking about it. So of course, like whether you're a student, whether you're you know community theater. But, yeah, so so you when you're when your husband feedback. is your husband going to review your show? No. <laughs> That's a, that's a conflict of interest. Yeah. Is it? It is. Happily. Because if he grades it poorly. <laughs> happily. No love song for Jacob. Oh, Jacob, have I loved? No more. 
La Las Vegas Weekly happily has a whole stable of reviewers, like the uh, illustrious Molly Malone. Yep. And others. We should get a couple of them in here. Lysander and Andrew <laughs> and Wright have chimed in. I want to. Oh, Lysander oh, chimed oh. back in. He said, oh, wow. Michael. Uh, Lysander says Michael hits on a very important point that is yet to be addressed in Las Vegas. What the, what is the difference between community theater and professional theater as it pertains to productions here? There's a lot of gray area and overlap, and I don't think it'll ever get solved. But assuming that a theater here consists of just one or the other is underserving the artists who create. Absolutely. And so I think that's a very important statement. Actually, I agree we'll with him. We'll put Lysander. Yeah, and you know, here's what Andrew Wright said. Um, I think <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Andy. Um, I think they certainly have their place. We're talking about awards, especially in terms of recognition of the performers who put in so much time. People do it because they love it, but there is an element of always wanting to get better and wanting to be the best. The long hours and drive to do deserve recognition, yeah. but like Michael pointed out, not what Vegas currently has. A legit committee or method like yes. the Ovation Awards in L.A. or something along those lines. He said, uh, speaking on, on... I don't know, is Owen Gleiberman and Lisa Schwartzbaum at EW really a legitimate committee? I well, mean, like, you they're know, all people with opinions. This, and, 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 that's the, and that's the problem with this community is that, you know, oh, the recognition, mm -hmm. um, you know, if... like And, and, and again, we, we speak of, you know, those individuals in town that review shows. Uh, Brandon has gotten many horrible reviews from oh, Mr. Yeah. Duvalle. Brandon sure. is a fantastic actor. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's one person's opinion. Well, uh, and but but that recognition which, that which, recognition that Brandon's looking for, he's going to get it from a lot of different angles too, and is not necessarily going to be looking at it in the black and white script of the Review Journal or uh, the Las Vegas Weekly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I would say that if anything, what it does is, uh, you know, when I do a play, after the play, I hope that people go to the bar and they say. Man, I need a drink because I want to talk about what just happened. Yep. I want right. to talk about the performances. I want to talk about how did this make me feel. You know, it's right now it's everybody it's in our song like yeah. is like, oh, this is an amazing show. But I, I'm interested to see. You know, are we in our own little mm -hmm. you know quarantined world where we think that it's wonderful? And, and let's right. see what happens when it gets out into the world. And when you get the reviews, it helps facilitate those conversations. To me, it's not so much about the you're good, you're bad. It's about this is an opinion to spark it's, a conversation. It's, 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 rather it's, than it's, it's about the human interaction of yeah. the audience afterwards. And, and I will say a few shows, uh, and Shane Cullum did win the Tony this year for his work in Iphigenia in uh -huh. Orem. And that it was a show that did get a lot of talk after from the oh, French yeah. Festival. Yeah. Ole, yeah, was talking about Oleana, it. same thing. There yeah. was a lot of discussion, and Duvalle even a lot went. Of juice. He even went forward and wrote an uh, wrote a piece in the RJ about creating the discussion specifically after mm -hmm. seeing Oleana. I remember that. Uh, and and for me that was like cool yeah. uh, because uh, you know the reviews aside, he even wanted to continue the discussion and that speaks volumes to me more so than somebody coming up shaking my hand you did a great job because that's something that as an actor is like oh people are going to do that well it's and it's and it's it sparks interest and curiosity i mean it's like take anybody you go to the movies that's what's the first thing you do out of, after you get out of the movies you go into the but car and you're driving to wherever you're going and you talk about what you loved and hated sure. about it and and it's like well that, that's that's, that's yeah. different that's different than having a discussion about the, the structure of the show. Love Song is going to spark some discussion m m in a completely different way than, oh, I love the dancing that was in fill-in-the-blank musical, you know, show. Um, there, there's, a, there's a big difference between a show like uh, it, what's some of the stuff coming up? Uh, Music Man that's going to be coming up. There's a big difference be between going to see a standard mm -hmm. classic musical than there is about seeing something edgier. Well, it's like saying it's like saying the story of Hamlet versus a Three's Company episode. I mean, it's kind of like yeah. I mean, oh, no, legit, no, no, those are exactly argue, the same. I would argue, depending, I would argue, um, Chris and Ophelia, some very good discussion for both. It's just how you approach it. I like watching a show when the review hasn't come out yet and then waiting for the review. And, and see, see how close well, you are. That's yeah. the thing. is, It's like there's the dialogue that you have after you experience an art in any form. Mm -hmm. Painting, music, and everything. The thing that an award does, and I, I don't know why, 
but it spurns the most passionate level of conversation. Yeah. Like you feel live theater. Yeah, even beyond, even beyond. You know, even if you want to go to Oscars and Tonys, oh, you know what I mean. It's like when yeah. you feel something deserves it and it doesn't, you're you're destroyed. But then you feel the need to ex ex explain every piece of yeah. why you feel that way. I, I, and that's I think the boon of awards is it gives everybody like a, a vocabulary, a real discussion yeah, to hit yeah, the yeah, yeah. real core issues of like why you think that show should happen. Like we had like and, and, very I, keep, articulate and I keep going back to um, Faith Lutheran, but I'm, I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you a, a, like an understanding that it's on all levels. It's high school, community, professional. Mm -hmm. You're talking about all levels. We were recently adjudicated for Peter Pan when we did it in the fall for the International Festival setting, the, you know, the, the Nationals. Right, right. You know, we want to take the show to Nationals. Nash, Shazam. And, yeah, and I'm, th I'm hoping that we go. But here's the for, thing. For which show? Peter Pan. Oh, okay, fantastic. So I, I'm hoping that we go. If they decide to or not let us do that, that's, that's neither here nor there. I'm more concerned about those adjudication sheets. Right. I want to see what they had to Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, well, you're, but you're, I mean. and, and you're speaking from an educator. You're speaking from a director. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily as an actor. You have a different perspective Probably of things. Um, I, I and I was going to be very very glib a moment ago. I was thinking that uh, all the actors in town before they start a show should have a rose, and when somebody comes to review them, if their rose is taken, <laughs> then, it, then then they know how well they, they just did. Know. Oh. Yeah. They just know. Uh, and, and again, I, I, and that's a completely different aspect of the discussion, yeah. because in this room there are three directors mm -hmm. and five actors, and and I think it's completely and different. four of those actors are really good. Which one bum, 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 bum. I think it's perhaps Scarlet perhaps Conservatory. perhaps the one that has two nominations. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never won an award. And, and, so and and I am wearing I red pants. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you have you have you have to watch the YouTube video to actually see Eric's red pants. There, there's a there's a there's a I think there's a significant difference because uh, and 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 I'm presuming as a director you want your actors to feel good about the work they've done yeah. and, and 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 there's a, there's an aspect of being a teacher and and I know Mr. Amblad you're a teacher uh, Eric I, yeah, but uh, both Eric's are a teacher Cooper, I've done Cooper teaching didn't feel that way. Here's well the thing, though. that's like, why he gets beat up in clockwork right. whether you like him or not everybody in this room can't wait to see who won the Tony Awards. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I mean, everybody <laughs> picks up the paper. Everybody looks at it, and, and we're the first people to send I, out little messages on Facebook to those people care. who won. I didn't Congratulations, care. Congratulations, Well, that's the part you know? of it. That's the part of it is it's like, well, let's at least celebrate together. We are, I yeah. mean, acting, and, you know, we're all running theaters. We're all trying to pull an audience, and it's a, we don't have enough of an audience where we don't feel like we lose some of our audience when they right, go somewhere right. else. And we're starting to finally get that idea. It's starting to permeate. But, but when you look at the history of the awards in this town, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I've been looking at these awards since I started getting actively... When I moved back to this town, I got actively involved in the theater in 2004. When you look at the course of the awards since 2004, it's a way of just tracking the evolution of this community. Back when there were only a few companies, and now yeah. there's so many companies. I mean, it's it, Devali in um, this year's uh, column talked about how there was just such a boom of kind boom of, yeah, yeah. Uh, of content out there to, yeah. to try and deal with. I, I, and it's it's a great, almost historical document of like what we have done and where we are it's going. It's a legacy. I, 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 would, I would like to see Mr. Duvalle actually incorporate some other individual's opinions in this. Still call it the Tony Awards. It's still his call. Or maybe have a different section. But, but, but you know, the, the, oh, the, the, yeah, the people's choice. Sure. You should talk to his editors it, the, the, to the, give him some more inches. Mm. Right? Especially, especially in I've something along those lines. That. Yeah, I've always said it. He, he. I, I can't tell you the number of times I've had a conversation with Mr. Diwali, and said, and he says, I wish. If I, I only yeah. had a few more. Inches. What do you want from me so I can be that? No. What the? And he's always saying how he wish he Danger had more sex. Danger. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. The, those of you that are listening at 11.50 uh, caught the innuendo. Uh, it was amazing. Mr. Ball didn't. Um, I didn't catch the innuendo. No. Well, I'm also the only one not drinking. You're drinking Red Bull. I'm Good drinking sir. water now. No. Because i got to go to sleep at some point. you got to teach tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Tomorrow's a Monday. Um, Monday. We should take one last. We have ten minutes left, and I still need to take one more commercial break. Oh, wow. We'll be right back. And we'll talk just a tiny bit more before we let you go to sleep. Vegas-Broadway.com. <laughs> Broadwayworld.com. Glenn Heath. <laughs> 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 oh, man, this is hurting. We'll come right back. We'll, we'll just do like one commercial and come right back. This is ridiculous. That question.
question of professional versus community is like it's, it's all over the country. Every city has I, that. I, I, I think yeah, what's insulting. the definition? Is it union? Is it payment? I mean, I, I, I think that's I think that's a different payment. Because what I what I do I feel is professional work. You guys are going to yeah. consider like paintings. Like, like, paintings. Really? like if you don't sell your painting, I don't do it art. Like, and I don't do that. it for that. Where's I think the, I no, everything I, artistic is subjective. Ideally, it's, it's I will know the audience. audience. And it's like it's art. It doesn't need to be professional. Or I have community. a conversation it's with my art. class like, every year. It should be artistic in all aspects and pursuits. Right. It's like it's like your your work should be on a professional level. Otherwise, what are you doing? Right. Why are you bothering? Why are you wasting? Let's, let's right. go right back in. Yeah, because I want to talk. I want to just say stay at home and watch Grey's Anatomy. Yes, or yeah, The Bachelor. Bachelor. <laughs> Wait, is Grey's Anatomy still on? I know. Why well, said you stay at home and watch Jersey Shore? That's not on anymore because there is no Jersey Shore. No. Oh, <clears throat> now it just got real. Ooh, sweet tomatoes. Where it's commercial break, I can be real. <laughs> I can say fuck <laughs> right now. I can't. I can't. I can't in five seconds. Bombs. All right, we're back. That was the quickest commercial ever, and I want to just say something. Now, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how the fact that these, you know, oh, the very nature of awards is subjective. The very nature of creating good theater is subjective. I have this conversation with my students about this. I lived in Chicago during a time when they had this art exhibit, and I'm going to not remember the artist's name, but I, I remember that his medium for creating these big, beautiful murals of, of religious paintings, uh, the... the uh, Mary and, and another one was uh, anyway and, and his medium yeah no well it was Catholic oriented, and so it was mostly centered around Mary and everything anyways um, and his Balthazar. medium was was um, horse manure and different shades of horse manure oh, and stuff. his Christ is one of my favorites yeah and, he, <laughs> and there was all these picketers out front you know and they were picketing about you know religious zealots and stuff sure and, and um, it was funny because I always have this conversation with my students I bring this up and I say is it art or not in your opinion, and some of the students say, "Well, no, it's it's sacrilegious because you shouldn't do." It. Others say, "No, it's art because you can make something out of anything if you're creative," and it's like true. Here's the thing: that's the very subjective nature of art in general. Sure. You know, it's like you said something. Um, what did you say about paintings? Uh, well, how, how just because a, you don't sell your painting doesn't mean it's not art. You know what I mean? Like yeah. breaking art but, down but, to a payment but, level. But me, is, but me defecating on a canvas is not art. Well, and if you squiggle it around enough times to make it look like a Jackson No, no I mean, can't. well, is it, is it art or is it exhibition? It, either well, way, well, exhibitional, exhibitional art. Exclusive. Yeah, exhibitional art. Blue Man Group is considered is exhibition art. I don't think it's necessarily mutually exclusive, but you know, one but, man's, but for, one but man's me, defecation is another man's oil well, and piss, uh, acrylic. Piss Christ is a great example of that. It's he just sank. Have you ever seen the movie Quills? <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, actually, <laughs> I, I owned a copy of that at he, one point. You know, but he floated a little movie. ninety-nine cent. You know, Christ figurine in urine and took a picture of it, and it's amazing. Or somebody it's saw a, Jesus I, I, in a piece of another way. Another exactly. way that, that I like to describe it is: Great Expectations is right now taught in almost every high school as one of the great novels in literary history. When it came out, it was derided as popular culture claptrap. Penny, and, penny per word. Yes, penny per word, just utter crap. Ooh, it wasn't until it was. people started to, you know, when T.S. Eliot started to write about it, that people started to look at that as this mm. amazing novel. So to say that, you know, you know, maybe you are just uh, using canvas as toilet paper. Well, I'm, I'm being, I'm being glib. to be facetious uh, or flippant yeah, to or, flip or, or whatever. Or yeah, slurry, <laughs> <or> yes. rude. <laughs> but uh, you know, th these are the I'm these being, are the things that I mean. Like to me, the great thing about art is that it is community building when it is at its best, because community building is based on discourse and engagement. If art puts you in a corner and makes you stay there then how much art is it? If mm -hmm. we're doing love song for the rehearsal process, then how much are we doing art? It's when we actually get those audiences on Friday night. Art we actually and Saturday and, and Sunday matinee. Art is done so that it may be shared. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's not, I think, it's that it's we not a play until find our you have an audience. Common Absolutely. human element. It's not a play until you have an audience. You the can, audience you is have the to final share character. that experience. Yeah. Exactly. It's a dialogue. That's what I always tell my kids when they audition. I said, even if you're singing a solo in an audition, you, you are not singing alone. you got to remember there's another character, even if that other character is the audience member. You know what I mean? You have to remember that, that you are never alone on stage. You are always supported and, and challenged by somebody else, always, and that's that's actually of a great. If you think about it, it's comforting Absolutely. as a performer. You know what I mean? Because it's nothing that you have to face or do alone. It's very, you know, and this started as a conversation of 
And the Chinese got trophies make really a big <laughs> deal. It got it got it got into an ugly argument. Eric. And I think it was both Eric's took off their pants. Not my red pants. And, and, and I'm wearing red underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. And Stephen Sondheim once within the conversation at the Smith Center when I went and saw, he said something about awards. He said that, and I'm going to mess it up, but you can look it up online. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's from his book actually. And he says, mangles he said, time, "Build please. a better mousetrap, something, something, <laughs> path to your door." Yeah, he, he said something about an awards. He doesn't like his awards. He doesn't like awards in general, just because unless an award gives you a prize that you can use. Right. Like one time, he was awarded a piano for something, and wow. he says. He Best award. loved that award because he uses it every day. Right when I got then, my Nobel Peace Prize, that yeah. was a great because well, the you know the, he, me, the medal goes with everything, and the and million he, dollars you know buys a lot of yeah, cheddar, whatever. bacon, onion, chicken sandwiches. And he, uh, <laughs> he also said that for the Pulitzer he won, he got a million dollars or something like, or a hundred thousand dollars something like that, and he used that to buy things to help him write more. He says those were the most useful. He goes all the other awards, including the Tonys that he's won. He goes they sit on a shelf. He never looks at them. He constantly has to pay his housekeeper to dust them. He goes, it's it, the most ridiculous waste of space in the world. And he goes, and he appreciates the acknowledgement, but what are you going to do now? Right. It's, it's, like, goes, it's like the paper certificates you get it. from your boss for achievement except in, the, in awesomeness. Except the, differ the difference is this, is that the Tony Awards... Uh, are which one which, of the ways which Tony Awards are you? The, okay, so the uh, the, the, Vegas, the, Vegas the American Awards? Theater oh, okay. Wing uh, Tony Awards, mm -hmm. uh, they are part of the canonization process. Part of the way, oh yeah, oh yeah, that we deal with Stephen Sondheim. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that we deal with Stephen Sondheim is you know the Shakespeare of American musical theater. Temporary yeah. uh, is that uh, you know we we can point to Tonys or the snubs like. <laughs> The Oscars snubbing Citizen Kane is one of the ways that we engage Citizen Kane as a canonization moment. Now, it may just take up space on his mantle. I think he was talking about the novelty of a so, trophy. So the novelty, versus, yeah, the novelty of the trophy yeah. for him personally, like the novelty of my Tony Awards is, oh, well, that was really cool. But what's great about all of it is that it creates the discussion. Yeah. Canonization is about involvement. Engagement and coming together. My, my, I, 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 and this may not necessarily be a final question, but it could be close. Um, it, do, One minute and a half. No, well, I, 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 I want to, I want to pose a, a quick question. question. Do awards, ser do awards ceremonies, um, create the longevity of a play as well, or a musical, or a movie? Well, and, 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 and all of a sudden you have these also rands that mm -hmm. yes, you love them, but they fall into obscurity. I, would I mean, a love, love song is a very interesting play. Didn't win a, a Tony Award. I think it won a. It was, uh, uh, it was nominated yeah. for nominated. the 2007 Olivier Award. For I, okay, Best but I'll but argue that no, it doesn't, and I'll tell you why. Take a look at Wicked and Avenue Q. That year, well, that take a look at Star Wars. Star well, Wars didn't win. Wicked was supposed to win. You know, so everybody it thought it was yeah. going to win, and then Avenue Q won, and everyone was like, "And Avenue Q is brilliant." Okay, but but I don't know. I don't right. know. I'm torn yeah. about that. Which is the better film, Goodfellas or Dances with Wolves? Dances with Wolves won the Oscar. I, you know, so it's it's it. I would argue that that propelled Wicked into this huge marketing. You know, I say I say Justin Guarini. Oh, get out! You and your curly hair. No one remembers who Justin he, Guarini yes, was. Yes, he was the runner-up to Kelly Clarkson. Mm. I am very here suit, so I understand the Kelly Clarkson. Oh. Uh, no. Here suit. Here suit. Here suit. You suit. <laughs> Bear Castle. Your we suit. Need Welcome to the grave. I will have vengeance. <laughs> we need to close up shop, yo. Listen, I, I hope you guys are just as engaged as we are in talking about this, and maybe this will start a, a STEMA conversation around the, the water cooler tomorrow. But in the meantime, look forward to us coming back on the air next week, Sunday from 6 to 8. Um, I hope you go to our Facebook page in the meantime, like our Facebook page, like our YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube thing. Um, thanks to Chris Scott, our producer, who I always forget to thank at the end of every episode. Um, Woo, Chris! Yeah, Woo. check out check out Cockroach Theater and all their goings on and and, and their upcoming production featuring Jessica Hurd, uh, directed by Eric Ablett, Brandon McClanahan, and Glenn Heath. It's opening this. And Jessica, Jessica, Jessica Afton is also extraordinary. Oh yes, I'm sorry, she she's, just not, she's, she's just, just not here. She's just not here. Is wonderful. Um, Love Song, it's opening December 7th through December 23rd. In the meantime, um, if you're interested in audition, lots of things to audition for, lots of theater to see in the community, but uh, most importantly, just support the arts in the community. That's what we're all about, and we hope that you uh, will, will tune in and join us again next time. 
Good for, times. For everybody here in the studio, this is Eric Bell saying peace and thanks for tuning in. Woo! <laughs> sexy times. Sexy times with, with Eric Bell. That's right. That's right. <laughs> sexy times. Put the bell away. With, with, the, with the exit, <laughs> exit music of... <laughs> <laughs> And with newsies. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching Sexy Time with Eric Ball. One. That was a hell of a fun time. Thank you. Again? Again, again, that was a hell of a fun yeah, time. I love doing this show with you guys. Seriously, you're always welcome. Always welcome. Please come on. Any kind of work. Thanks. Harangue. I, I, I have so much fun on this. Good. Now you know why we do it. We love it. Yeah. I just think it stems exactly what we're talking about. Conversation. We can yeah. just talk about shit. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Awesome. Stuff and things in general. And oh, things oh, and yeah. stuff. And things and monkeys and stuff. And monkeys, monkeys and labels <laughs> and labels and stuff. <laughs> Monkeys, monkeys, and monkeys, play bills. Okay, you want to hear something about play bills? This is a funny story. So I, my wife asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and one of the things that I said, I was just rattling off a few things, and I said a, a subscription to Playbill Magazine, and she goes, "What?" And I said, "Playbill Magazine." And she goes, "Oh, Play Bill." I thought she said, play bill. and I was like, "Play Bill." And I thought it was those red or are they rust? I, they're like a rust. They're not really red. They're kind you of. Get run? Yeah, I had an open house today at the school, so I had a dress. Can you stick around for a so quick picture? Oh yeah. Camp right. color. Oh yeah. All right. I break the mold, my dear. Bye, guys. Thank you, Chris, for all that. You